Hello, greetings. Greetings, everyone. Oh, greetings. Hello. Hey, hey Hello. How, you, how you been? How you been? I, uh, <laughs> I see, see you. Hello. Hello. Nice, nice to Come see you. It's been, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you very well. Yes. Okay. Just, you. I'll, I'll be with you in a few minutes. Okay. Hello. Hey, oh. Abra is that Abraham over there? Yeah. Good, good. Uh, Abdurrahman. I am oh, Abdurrahman Al Zahrani. Hi, how you doing? I'm Dr. John Bennett from Miami. We're just getting yeah, things okay. ready here. Let me Thank get you. here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? Uh, um. Wow, three people from Tayyaman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, very good. Why are uh, you really with You know, Abraham? Yes? Yeah, the, the, the Facebook wasn't working. I had to use YouTube to live stream. Ah, uh, okay. I'm using YouTube now. We're on. We're live now on YouTube. Okay. Then we have. Uh, but I also put the link on uh, Facebook. This will uh, for voice. Uh, we'll get clear voice and clear voice and clear. Voice will not be clear. Hmm? Voice will not be okay. Okay. Okay, so let me see the presentation again. No, no, I want to make it bigger like this. Mm -hmm.
Hello, Hera. Can you hear me? I need to unmute. You need to unmute, Hera. Hello, Hera. Hi. Okay. Hi, John, can you hear me? Yeah, how are you doing? Where are you at? Are you in Nepal? Yeah, I'm in Nepal. I'm in Professor Cherian's office. Oh, okay, good. Okay, yeah. so are your speakers here now for the first couple of talks? Uh, yeah, I'll have to just check. Uh, okay. is... Divya is our first uh, speaker. Let me... We have, we have 10 minutes. Yeah. We have uh, a lot of viewers from Kayumin right now, Russia. I'm sorry? We have a lot of viewers from Russia today. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Let's get, it, get the what Russian yeah. channel going. Yeah. Yeah, you got a good, diverse group of Hello, people. Dr. Hello, Dr. Hi. Hi. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, Hi. everybody. Good morning. Now open my yeah, we'll go around and introduce all of ourselves in a, in a few minutes. In a few minutes, we'll be introducing everybody. Yeah, we just wait for the first speaker to come online. Okay, I think uh, Divya is that. Yeah, Divya. Yeah. <laughs> She's here. There she is. Hello, Dr. Divya. Let me unmute her here, maybe. Uh, She's unmuted, okay. There she is. Hi, Devia, good morning. Um, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Hira, you're asking how me? How are you? No, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm asking you, how are you? Ah, fine, when is your exam? Um, in Jan, January, 16th. January. Yeah. Okay, January. all the best, all the best. Yeah. We just started. in, in uh, Okay. Yeah, I'm in Nepal. Yeah, I'm in Nepal uh, for the conference. Okay. All the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. yeah. So we wait for 10 minutes. Uh, we start yeah. at uh, yeah, yeah. 2 30. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let all the other panelists come in. Who's it? So the next speaker, the 15 minute talks, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. 15 minutes each. Okay. So you got to keep the pace going. Is Dr. Alberto here? Alberto, I don't know. Okay, wait a minute. There's a couple more here. Oh, Akma is here from China. 
Oh, that's great. Yeah. He's a medical student from Indonesia going to uh, do his residency in uh, China, Nanking, China. Okay. Hello, Ahmad. Welcome. Unmute yourself there. Hey, Dr. Bennett. Hi, Do hey, Akbar, Hi. how are you doing? Good. Yeah, we'll introduce everyone to everyone else in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, that, I don't know what how you want to structure it here. Uh, it is tight. I don't know if you want to introduce everyone, whatever you think is good, whatever. Yeah, it's, whatever. it's going to be the same way, the same way. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay, okay. I'm just waiting for a couple of uh, more speakers to sign in so that uh, we don't have a trouble with them. Okay. Oh. Well, do you expect trouble with the speakers? They're going to act up a little bit. Oh, we can always have. We can always manage in between if uh, if someone doesn't make it on time. So we can always. Yeah, you might have it. to shuffle. You might have to. Sh that's yeah. a good. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. You might have to shuffle the times. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, it, it'll flow. It'll flow. Oh yeah. Yeah. They do that at, at conferences too. Sometimes something happens and they change the order and stuff like that. Pe yeah. People understand. So I have not. I'm not recording this uh, yet. Yeah, not now. Yeah. It's, not it's, now. But it is live on on YouTube on online. Yeah. Okay. okay. You can probably see it. It's on the web page. Okay, okay you're getting all that. So, Professor Kato is joining us here. No, she's not. She's uh, in this uh, Isman's meeting in China. So, she sent her message to oh, me. Okay, okay. okay. For, uh, yeah. okay. A welcome message for all of the fellows and the participants. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay, three minutes we start. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know, know and I'll just push the button. Record. All right. You know, I'll do the same, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and then after I say one, you start, okay? Yeah. Yeah, we did the conference yesterday with uh, Naran from uh, Brazil. <clears throat> Endoscopy of the uh, uh, ENT field. <clears throat> 
And we're televising on a Dospi conference from uh, Uruguay next week. We got it, got it at the last minute, a big neurosurgery, con neuroendoscopy conference. Okay, one more person. So you have the first speaker at least, right? Yeah, I do have the first speaker. Uh, Dr. Alberto is having some difficulty with the internet connection, but I think we'll start. Okay. We've got two minutes, right? Yeah. Okay. Give you as the first speaker. Yeah. Uh, for five minutes, uh, I have to convey the message by Professor Kato, and then we start with Dr. Divya. All right. Okay. Yes. What, what do you? Okay. What do you? What'd you say? Yeah. Did, uh, what'd you say here? Uh, yeah, I have a, pres a message from Professor Kato. Okay. Oh, Dr. Kato, yeah, will... Kato's coming. Yeah, yeah. She oh, will not make it to the conference, so she sent her a message. Oh, okay. So, okay. Okay. Tell. Uh, uh, are you ready yeah, to we go? Start. Yeah. Ready? We start. Okay. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. Good afternoon from Nepal. This is Dr. Hira Burhan, President of the Asian Medical Students and Resident Society for Neurosurgery. I'm bringing you the Fujita Alumni Association Online Symposium 2018. Um, we, this symposium is to uh, con connect all the fellows and the participants who have been a part of Fujita Health Network together and so that we can start our first uh, uh, web conferencing through this platform. So our first, uh, we would like to introduce the panelists. Dr. Nasir, can you please introduce yourself? Dr. Nasir. Okay, Dr. Ajmat, can you introduce yourself please from China? Ah, uh, hi. Hello, yes, Dr. Ajmat, please in introduce yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Ahmad. I'm first year res neurosurgery resident from Nanjing Medical University. Okay. Okay. Hi, Dr. Ajmat. Um, we start with a uh, message from Professor Yoko Kato. She is the president of the Asian Congress of Neurological Surgeons. Uh, we are privileged to have her as our mentor, and she is the one who initiated the Fujita Alumni uh, Web Symposium. Um, we have a, I'll be sharing my screen and I will show the message she has sent to all of us. John, can you see this? Can you see this, John? Yes, I can see it. Okay. So this is our program for today. Fujita Alumni Association, we start with a message from the opening remarks by Professor Kato. Dear colleagues, thank you everyone for joining this webinar for Fujita Alumni Association of Neurosurgery. Nowadays, technology is involving in the field of neurosurgery. Uh, just a second including pre-operative imaging studies, device-assisted surgeries, post-operative care, consultation using telemedicine and technology for medicine or genetics. So young neurosurgeons should be updated and follow this knowledge to take care of our patients. This can be very challenging in some areas with limited resources. However, if we eagerly strive together to provide the surgical knowledge, idea, surgical skills, and the ways to connect neurosurgeons, we can achieve this goal. About the fellowship program of the Banbatan Hotokokai Hospital, Fujita Health University was established, uh, established the International Neurosurgery Fellowship Training Program following the WFNS Training Center criteria back in 2014. This program is designed for a duration of at least one month and till now, till now 50 fellowship trainings have been provided. Almost all of those fellows were young neurosurgeons who came from around the world, including India, Indonesia, Thailand, China, Italy, Malaysia, Uzbekistan, and the United States. Moreover, we are accepting and promoting female neurosurgeons from many countries to have this opportunity to learn. The Fujita Neurosurgery Alumni Association is elected for a formal um, uh, bylaws. The president, the secretary, 
treasurer, vice president are changed every two years. The membership can be taken by all the members trained at Fujita University. We also provide interim Fujita Health University alumni meetings in many countries in part with international conferences. So I would like to invite all of you to this association. This web seminar is also one of our projects and this can introduce effective, this can introduce effective learning through telecommunication. Not only is this beneficial to provide the knowledge, but also helps to build connections, which is one of the most important things that we can do it. I hope this project will succeed and it can continue in the next time for our society. Thank you very much from Professor Kato. So we now start our... Uh, This mouse has some troubles. You're still screen sharing, Hero. Just get off yeah, the screen. Yeah, I. Yeah, At the no. very top, just say get off screen sharing. Yeah, yeah, but my. No, this mouse is not working. Oh, yes. We need to. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay. All right. Having some troubles using Mac this time for the first time. I am not used okay. to using Mac, so. Okay, yeah. Apologies for the inconvenience. Okay, so we would like to call upon Dr. Divya Palanisamy. She is a neurosurgeon from Chennai, India. She will be talking about an introduction and orientation to Fujita Fellowship. Dr. Divya, this is all yours now. Yeah, hi. Yeah. So, uh, one minute. I don't know. I'm just wondering. I'm sharing my screen. Are you seeing the slides, Hira? Can you see the slides? Yes, we can. I'm sharing, okay. Um, yes, excellent. Okay, so I'm Dr. Divya, I'm from India. I uh, did my fellowship at Fujita from uh, March to May, 2018. I thank Professor Yoko Kato for giving me this opportunity to talk. And I'm going to give a talk today, uh, which will give an orientation to the uh, fellowship at Fujita. Okay. So uh, the aim of uh, this fellowship is to train the young residents and young neurosurgeons from developing countries and also uh, underdeveloped countries. So it is also to give an exposure for them to various subspecialities and advanced techniques which are practiced in Japan. So the fellowship, usually the duration is one to three months and they provide you with a free accommodation in a stereotyped apartment, uh, which is located very near the hospital. And uh, they provide you with scholarship money and but that is given at the end of your fellowship. So when you come to Japan for the fellowship, you have to arrange for the money uh, in Japanese uh, money like yen uh, as cash or a visa card and uh, you will be reimbursed at the end of your fellowship. So flight ticket is our responsibility and uh, uh, there is no travel expense involved because the apartment is very near to the hospital. So this is the Banbunten Hospital, uh, means which was built as the first uh, means building of the Fujita Health University. And this is the view which is taken from the uh, railway station. So what are the images I have taken? I'm presenting uh, today. So, and this is the stereotyped apartment. So it has a water kettle and it's an, it has an electric cooker and it has a mini fridge and you have also an electric uh, stove so you can uh, cook your own food. And uh, during winter seasons, especially from September to March, it's better you bring uh, uh, blankets and sweaters and jackets and everything. It will be very, very cold. And uh, so how to apply for the fellowship? So you have to go to the WFN's uh, web website. You, can, you have to do online application. You have to send. So go to www.wfns.org. Go to fellowship application. Uh, select Fujita. And uh, that will give you the details of the program and what are the documents that are required for the application. You can apply, um, there is a link for online application and also you can contact Professor Yoko Kato in this uh, email ID, neuron2 at Fujita, H-U-A-C, J-P and Y Kato at Fujita, H-U-A-C, J-P. Okay, so actually this fellowship is very busy. The uh, schedule is very busy. Like they accept uh, three fellows at a time. 
so you may get the reply uh, from the uh, secretary miss toshika knows and uh, but you will uh, you will get the fellowship after 6 months or 1 year since the schedule are always almost filled so wait for the reply from toshika knows so once you join uh, the fellowship so it's very busy there so be ready to become a busy bee so the uh, means day means work starts on monday morning at 7:30 am with presentation of the cases for the week uh, means uh, what are the cases which are posted for surgery the next week and the other weeks they are all written in the board in the fellow room so you have to get the uh, uhid and put it in the computer get the images of the patients uh, fellow has to make a powerpoint presentation of all those cases and uh, you have to the fellow has to do a cfd that is computational fluid dynamics for the aneurysm patients that should all, those images should also be incorporated into the powerpoint and uh, that will be discussed on the monday morning so tuesday morning 7:30 we have journal club meeting that is also comes in rotation the fellows have to do that in rotation and tuesdays wednesdays thursdays or operation theater days so if you are interested with permission of professor keto you can assist for the surgeries at the I means on the same day the surgery videos should be edited because professor uh, will present those edited videos to the patient and the attenders the next day morning so that is very important the video editing so on friday morning at 7:30 am like uh, there is a discussion uh, means will be happening on the edited surgical videos and also the surgical steps are discussed and which is followed by a short uh, ward rounds quick ward rounds and video editing is important how the fellow has to bring a laptop uh, and a good video editor should be downloaded before going to japan that is very very important and uh, means if you are interested in uh, other uh, surgeries professor will arrange for that like uh, functional surgeries and all she will uh, find out which hospital they are doing and uh, she will allow you to visit those hospitals to visit those surgeries to see those surgeries and they provide you with some uh, travel uh, allowances also and you are uh, fellow is expected to present means write at least one paper during the fellowship and if professor is organizing seminars and conferences like you have to help her in um, organizing this which will help you so these are all the uh, means expectations from the fellows like routines of a fellow so what you can learn as a fellow from fujita university so yes uh, we are there to learn the management of neurosurgical cases you will also learn how to uh, means do computational fluid dynamics i will come to that and how to draw the aneurysms and uh, you can see different surgical instruments which are not available outside japan and you can also learn how to do microvascular anastomosis and you have to uh, like i mean learn many for the many, many fellows that is a place where they learn how to write a paper so and uh, there is a good library with good books and articles you can access it uh, and you have access to uh, jms also and you can develop your organization skills i will come to each with my uh, experience so yes vascular surgery we have the mainly vascular surgery is done performed there so both surgical and endovascular you can see there and uh, means many surgical techniques like anterior laryngectomy sylvian fisher opening exposure of trinoidal segment of ica jugular tuber resection many uh, surgical things you, means steps you will learn also they do revascularization carotid endotectomy mbd and all those thing you can you are able to see and uh, endovascular procedures like coiling and means uh, the one which was interesting to me was uh, middle meningeal artery occlusion for uh, recurrent chronic subdural hematomas so more than one recurrence they do this procedure and uh, this is the external carotid artery angiogram you see the internal meningeal artery means uh, internal maxillary artery this is the middle meningeal artery you see the anterior branch and the posterior branch so they are filled with uh, the uh, means onyx so it's not seen so this was quite interesting for me so you will also get to see many like this and they also perform endoscopic surgery they have an uh, endoscopic arm means a robotic endoscopic arm so you can uh, see to that and they do perform spine surgeries calbe surgery tumor surgeries and you can visit specialized centers so they practice in japan they practice sub special uh, means they means sub specialty practice is there so you can see the giants uh, big big consultants in particular field and uh, means apart from this like uh, you will learn uh, how to do cfd computational fluid dynamics so it has four uh, parameters the pressure within the aneurysm wall shear stress vector and magnitude of the aneurysm and velocity within the aneurysm so this is a, a cft for a basilar apex aneurysm so the pressure is very high and uh, the vector the magnified view of the vector uh, here actually if the vectors are parallel to the 
an aneurysmal wall that means the wall is very thin and if the vectors are diverging that area is uh, the wall is thick so in japan actually we see get to see more of unruptured aneurysms in elderly patients so they do routine screening for all these patients that's how they diagnose so ruptured aneurysms are not common means not very common in uh, japan since they do the screening so in uh, these patients who are uh, diagnosed during screening so the cfd helps to know about whether to operate now or wait and watch so this high pressure with thin walled aneurysms they operate so this cfd is done for uh, mvd cases like trigeminal neuralgia hemifacial spasm and uh, glossopharyngeal neuralgias so uh, this is uh, to see the uh, area of contact whether uh, a contact of uh, vessel to the nerve is there or not that is identified with cfd and uh, this is the one of the right trigeminal neuralgia patient so you see the uh, superior cerebellar artery uh, forming a loop and compressing on the root entry zone of the fifth nerve and uh, this cft for uh, these uh, mvd patients is a uh, little uh, bit difficult because we have to isolate the offending vessel so that is that needs some training and uh, uh, some uh, time it takes some time so you dissect the vessel and this is uh, after the cfd this is the point uh, the red dot is the point where the contact is there so this patient had a very good recovery after the decompression so and uh, you also get to see uh, uh, use of intra uh, intraoperative adjuncts like uh, endocyanin endocyanin green angiography and uh, dual imaging video angiography which is a, a recently introduced uh, technique where uh, the vessel uh, with the dye actually looks green on the screen so we can see the real time relationship of the vessel to the adjacent structures perforators are all well seen so endoscopy is commonly uh, used in all the clipping patients to see whether the perforators are included in the clip and uh, whether the neck I means there is residual neck uh, at the end of the tip of the clip so uh, not to leave any residual neck of the aneurysm so endoscopy is commonly used there and i have seen brain oximetry used for uh, carotid endarterectomy and also they routinely use neurophysiological monitoring all these things you can see and learn uh, in fuji at fujita and this is one of the right ca and uh, actually uh, after the clipping right side oxygen saturation was good so uh, there was no uh, need for shunt so this is aneurysm drawing actually this was drawn by dr ricky tanaka who was a senior resident uh, senior resident at uh, fujita uh, he was there at that at, means when i was doing my fellowship so this uh, in this drawing of the aneurysm the intraoperative uh, uh, view of the aneurysm actually helps the residents to get an orientation during the surgery so this takes 2 uh, to 3 hours but uh, it really gives a good orientation so you can learn uh, this uh, drawing also from there and they have a separate book for that how to do this drawing and you can also get to see lots of surgical in instruments i told you so the thing I means two instruments were quite interesting for me like uh, the rubber hook retractor actually this retractor they are using it uh, to retract the skin and then they use the same for retracting the muscle and also the dura so there is no need for any assistant to retract means uh, retract so this is very useful and uh, this is uh, the instrument which is used for uh, endoscopic uh, surgery dr watanabe like uh, he uh, he is the endoscopic neurosurgeon so after excision of the pituitary tumor he closes the dura he sutures the dura so to push the knot inside he he uses this uh, instrument so it was quite interesting for me so you will get to see all those and this is you can also learn microvascular anastomosis because they we have a, a microscope this is dr neeranjana uh, one of the fellows and uh, she is i mean you, we have a microscope so she is doing this learning how to do the anastomosis and they provide you with the uh, instruments and uh, 10o or 9o suture material and all so that is also one good experience for you and then uh, we have a good library and you can use it for writing articles and uh, there are lots of surgical videos recorded in the hard disk for means many years so if you, you can access those videos and you can store it in a hard disk so better you bring one uh, tv hard disk that will be really useful and uh, the editing the surgical videos actually gives you a good experience like uh, it rehears is revise the surgical steps that you have uh, seen so and attending if there are conferences happening uh, in japan like professor will ask you to make the presentation so it's a good opportunity for you uh, 
to present posters or papers so articles you are supplements you are expected to write an article so i thank you sir keto for motivating me to write uh, these two papers and these two got published means uh, accepted for publication by me so so organizing skills uh, skills you can also develop organizing skills because uh, means when they conduct seminars and conferences you are uh, like you are the one who has to do all the arrangements for that so it helps you uh, and uh, if you are good at organizing skills actually professor promotes you to be the member of organization professor ait chiran is the counselor general of acns uh, who was a past fellow of fujita and uh, dr balamurgan dr ahmed ansari they are all uh, important members of the executive committee of acns they are also past fellow past fellows of fujita and uh, training of residents like it was uh, good to see that uh, he is uh, dr miyathini a young resident like he is uh, uh, working under the microscope dissecting the uh, exposing the aneurysm dissecting the sylvian fissure actually uh, dr yamada who is the assistant professor will be uh, means around and uh, they wait for the uh, residents uh, to see means until the resident asks sir please take over and help me out so he doesn't uh, disturb the resident this is the way they train the residents so he is uh, riki tanaka who was a senior resident there and uh, at the end of his training at fujita professor gave him an ophthalmic aneurysm clipping like uh, he uh, did the anterior clinectomy and uh, he exposed the dural rings and he opened the distal dural ring and he took the ophthalmic aneurysm it was inspiring and it's a good um, it's a different way of uh, teaching i have seen in japan and uh, these are all the other photographs that i have taken means uh, we have taken uh, dr harakuchi and dr ota Uh, they are uh, the endovascular neurosurgeons, and uh, uh, this is lunch with Professor Sano. And I'm privileged. Uh, I was privileged to assist uh, Dr. Chakizawa, the skull base surgeon, the best skull base surgeon. So on the first day of my fellowship, so and he uh, it means for a BA Pika and neurosurgery surgery clipping. So like he taught me. He was so kind enough to uh, means teach each and every step of uh, 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 clipping from skin opening. so and this is the fellow room and uh, dr mayur kamath from india and dr fumin from russia so i I'm, i'm thankful to both of them who helped me a lot during my fellowship career and uh, actually you get to know many people from uzbekistan russia in many places like uh, thailand and all so you develop lots of contacts with, uh, with consultants and uh, uh, other fellows that's a good experience and apart from academics there are lots of places to visit in japan you must be knowing like uh, this is the uh, buddha temple and uh, this is one uh, palace and lots of palaces lots of temples are there and uh, this is a temple located in the hill so the view from the hill is very beautiful and uh, there is a big aquarium this is the outside view and there are lots lots of events happening in the aquarium this is one of that uh, the dam is performance by the dolphins and uh, food and travel actually professor is very kind enough to provide lots of snacks and noodles to the fellows and that will be available in our fellow room so for vegetarians uh, who likes uh, means who eats eggs um, means they will be able to manage in japan but uh, pure vegetarians it's very difficult so i suggest them to take their own food and cook for themselves for non vegetarians japanese love food and there are lots of restaurants in and around the Uh, means uh, hospital in every place. Every street has at least two uh, restaurants, and they have lots of uh, means uh, different country uh, restaurants. So for Indians, so there are two restaurants at walkable distance, and there is a department store, uh, departmental store nearby. You can uh, means you can buy whatever you want for your house. And language, yes, it's uh, means they don't know means they don't speak much of English. So that may be a problem, but um, I suggest to you to download Google Translate. before you come to japan so that will help you a lot and japanese are very kind people so if you seek for help even though they cannot communicate means they cannot speak in english they will try to help you out so they are very nice people and uh, the transport system that they have a very good railway uh, system so there is a railway station which is located near our hospital and uh, they provide you uh, provide the fellows with cycles so you can uh, cycle you can do cycling also use it and bus is also available but common mode of uh, transportation is the uh, train and it's a very safe country especially for women actually we can walk uh, on the road at uh, 1 pm in the night nothing happens so seek for help they are very kind people they will be ready to help you so professor uh, means very often takes you for the to the restaurants and this is a 
uh, photograph taken uh, after the lunch and this is uh, a dinner uh, and this is a small uh, restaurant near the hospital so apart from all this you can see the hard work uh, by uh, the japanese people and uh, they give more respect for the elders and their teachers and uh, it's very impressive and the cleanliness and the self discipline they maintain the queue and all those things and uh, they are very well organized the way if you take the road or anything it is very well organized so you get to know about all those things in japan so uh this is my last day at kujita actually at the end uh, last day you will be provided with a valuable uh, certificate from, uh, from professor yoke keto and also you can get a recommendation letter so i am um, this is doctor uh, this is assistant professor dr emuda and uh, miyatani uh, resident and uh, professor kavasi and uh, means i thank all of them for their support during my fellowship and this is a farewell party she is toshiko knows and uh, she will help you a lot during uh, your fellowship you will i mean get to know once you join the fellowship and uh, so fujita is a place of uh, lots of it's filled with lo lots of opportunities so it's up to you to make use of it and this is the temple near the uh, our hospital so welcome to fujita to see the dance of sadans thank you thank you so much dr divya that was a wonderful orientation for all those who are new to fujita and who are planning on to pursue a fellowship there and it uh, really looks like a very welcoming place so um any comments uh, any questions anything someone would like to add obviously we have speakers who will be giving their own experiences about fujita so anything from the panel anyone achmad uh, dr anyone would like to add something or comment on this dr divya you need to stop the screen share please uh i don't know how to it's uh, the, on the top you find a red option which says uh, stop sharing okay yeah yeah yes. okay uh, okay we see dr alberto he's here okay so we move on to the next uh, presentation thank you so much dr divya and for everyone dr divya is the chairperson of the women in neurosurgery committee which has been started by the uh, by professor kato and uh, she is uh, leading the women in neurosurgery chapter for the acns so <laughs> a round of applause okay so we start we go from here we go to russia we have dr abdul rahman azharani he is resident of uh, professor albert sofyanov he is uh, practicing at the federal center of neurosurgery at tayumen he will be giving an overview about the education in the federal center of uh, neurosurgery in tayumen uh, welcome dr abdul rahman thank you yeah. thank you hero thank you good day sir known for everybody now we are talking now from moscow oh, from sorry from russia tayumen Uh, uh my name is dr abdul rahman al zahrani i'm doing my uh, training under uh, supervision of professor albert sepino um now we will start our presentation about federal center of neurosurgery so okay uh, yes. actually the federal center of neurosurgery uh, in uh, in tiomen was uh, built in the framework of the national project of public health of Russia and uh, that was uh, at 2011 uh, uh, after that actually uh, professor albert savinov he had developed more to high tech surgeries and was conducted in the center for patients uh, in and it's accommodated patients for uh, more than 80 regions of russia uh, and other countries international countries uh, now you can see the pictures now the prime minister the, the prime minister is visiting our center and also the government sectors uh, see they are care, taking care of our center as well uh, in our center we have 95 beds uh, and this is just divided to several sections or several, several units one is uh, functional neurosurgery and uh, we have for functional neurosurgery 20 beds and also we have neuro oncology department uh, we have for that 20 beds and we have uh, uh, spinal neurosurgery uh, and we have for that also 20 beds and we have cerebrovascular neurosurgery and we have for that as well 20 beds and pediatric surgery and we have for that 15 beds um beside this we have our own independent uh, neurosurgical uh, intensive care unit and for this we have 12 beds uh, surgical units uh, 
we have seven operation rooms, including one X-ray and geography system. Um, we use also very high tech, very high tech uh, equipment, uh, intraoperative CT, OR, and angiographic system. This is also intraoperatively used. Uh, microscopes, we have high qualities and the best qualities, Carl size. Uh, Bentro also, uh, Benetro, we have also uh, 3D cameras, intraoperatively can be used, navigation, uh, as well as we have brain lab, endoscopic uh, standards, uh, stand source, and the school lab. Uh, we have, I have, uh, we have, sorry, okay. We have intellectual hybrid operating room with full contra uh, control, uh, which can be used more for uh, more the, 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 the uh, tumor cases and uh, can be also uh, screened during the operation. In our center, actually, we have established first to do some not easy cases, actually, like road uh, babyloma, third ventricle, uh, ventricle uh, and also can be used endoscopical um, uh, removal for choroid babyloma. And also that we have, uh, this is our patients pre-op and post-op. This actually was first uh, uh, done some studies for that and uh, cover of the leading now of journal, uh, journals of pediatric was in 2013, uh, 2015, uh, shows the steps of our uh, neurosurgical department. Uh, we have performed uh, such cases and uh, it was taking the steps of the whole neurosurgical step This was the Professor Albert Safinov, who was operating the also uh, intrapetal, uh, so, sorry, uh, fetal uh, uh, hydrocephalus was also done. And this usually will make it possible to carry, to carry the baby full term. Actually, our department is uh, belong to Sushinaf University since November 2016. Uh, and it is it became the clinical base for academic department of neurosurgery of Sushinaf University in uh, Moscow. As we know, also the uh, strong clinical base make usual uh, successful of neurosurgeons. So for this, but we have practical training in academic department of neurosurgery. This was including uh, simulations laboratories, which help, can help for developing the skills of the new residents. And uh, we have also uh, using the cadaver laboratory. Uh, laboratory. Uh, during that, we can see also the anatomical studies and microsurgical and endoscopic approaches with uh, hands-on training. Uh, we have also full body cadaver laboratory. Uh, we can use for that one uh, also microscope and endoscopic approaches can be done. Uh, hand-on training on a spinal, a spine and peripheral nerve and vascular system as well. And we have uh, veterinary, veterinary laboratories used also for that by, by using rats and uh, this will you this is usually used to improve the skills for microsurgical anastomosis uh, as well that we have three dimension life surgeries usually done under uh, audio and live stream we have our independent section also for photo and video laboratory and we are using also the uh, simulators for surgeries, as you can see in this picture. 
uh, we have actually participated in a lot of publications and uh, native illustrated handbooks. As we can see, this is all under supervision and uh, uh, of Professor Albert Sofianov, as we can see it here in this picture. This is our uh, microsurgical laboratory. We have around 12 microscopes and we have also uh, some cadavers. We, we are processing for long time uh, courses of skull based surgery and uh, also endoscopic surgeries and spinal surgeries as well. This was, this is usually under the guidance of high uh, professors. I, they used to come from outside Russia, America, India, Nepal, Pakistan, from so many areas, like Germany. As we can see also in this picture now, our uh, skull base course was, uh, one of our guests was Professor Bar Barba from Brazil and Professor Vinko Dillons and uh, so many professors actually used to come to share our success in our uh, skull based courses and endoscopic courses as well. And this is for the Paul Body Cadaver Laboratory used to for dissection table and video and also the uh, C-arm can be used during the dissections and endoscope, a microscope as well. So it is a fully equipped room. We can be used that for full, full body cadaver laboratory. Uh, now we have also courses for spinal surgery for, and special, uh, we are more, mostly specialized for the craniovertebral junction areas. We invite professors from outside the country as we can see in the picture here. This is the trainees used to come for pathology laboratory also for the full body, as we have mentioned before. This is the section for rats, for microanastomosis. Actually in our operation rooms, we use very high tech equipmentation and instrumentations as well as you can see here in this picture. and uh, three dimension uh, courses. We can see it by three dimension ways and two dimension as well. Uh, this, uh, the, the, actually our course is, is worldwide known now under the supervision of Professor Albert Sofianov and also we used to have some good combination for that with when Professor Ar Barba or others colleagues come to our center here for presentations. This is our trainees. In the bit, this is our uh, lab, uh, laboratory. And our professor Albert Shefinov is uh, the leading one for uh, micro dissection areas. Now, actually, our neurosurgical center became one of uh, the international societies. Uh, we have shared in 33 international conference with educational courses also have been conducted. More than 93, uh, 930 doctors was also from 31 countries have been trained here. As we have mentioned, actually, this department is belong clinically for uh, academically for uh, session of university, which is located in Moscow. And it is one of the best universities here in, uh, in uh, Russia, uh, recognized internationally as well. So this is our uh, trainees come for the courses after courses and uh, they have some pictures with Professor Albert Sofinov and the guests as well. They used to, to have a certification after uh, courses. 
this is our guests also now we have some training courses for the macrovascular and uh, endoscopy and uh, aneurysmal lesions we can do also some training for that here this is our address and all what we what might be somebody need to know about the center so this is our our contact numbers telephones and uh, our uh, website and also viber whatsapp so it is very easy to contact our department here head of the department is professor albert sefinov now we have our international education course for minimally invasive neurosurgery usually yearly can be done between november and uh, this is our coming course will be after two weeks around or less than two weeks so we are all coming all for visit and for having this enjoyment for the for the training here thank you for your attention this is dr abdur rahman from germany again Thank you so much, Dr. Abdul Rahman. That was a wonderful introduction about the Russian Center for Tyramine. Um, I suppose you have a uh, you have a lot of audience from Russia at the moment. Yes, yes, actually, it is uh, belong to Moscow area. First, if somebody wants to study here, he should apply first to Moscow, and yeah. from Moscow they will uh, send to to me area. Okay, okay, that was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. We have one of your residents. I think Ibrahim is with us, so he would like to share any of his experiences. Ibrahim is here. Hi, hi, Ibrahim. Hi, hi. How are you? I'm here. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your experience at Tayumin. Ah, uh, this uh, that's here is good. I'm uh, I'm here because I'm so happy. <laughs> Oh, okay okay so yeah uh, it it is indeed one of the most uh, uh, we have had uh, uh, faculties going from pakistan as well to tie men i have always heard best about this i hope to come to you guys sometime yeah okay okay, okay we have um, uh, uh, from our panelists we have uh, dr leonardo can you please introduce yourself dr leonardo dr leonardo can you hear us Okay. Hi, you need yeah, yeah, yeah. Please introduce yourself to us. Are you are you listening? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, we can do. Uh, yeah. Uh, best greetings for you. Um, I am from Colombia right now. I'm resident of neurosurgery at the Human Neurosurgical Federal Center here in Russia. And well, it's amazing you now. Uh, foreign people for other centers who get uh, term the high technology training. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity to listen to you and to see you and know about your perspectives. Thank you. You're welcome, uh, Doctor Nasir. Can you hear us now? Yeah, you need to unmute, please. Please unmute. Yes, yes. Please introduce yourself, Doctor Nasir. Uh, we cannot hear you well. Okay, maybe there's some problem with the connection. So, any questions or any comments uh, for Prof. Uh, Dr. Abdul Rahman uh, on his um, uh, talk about the Tayoman Center for? Is there any any questions? Anyone would like to ask anything to him? So, we proceed with our next uh, presentation. Uh, that is Dr. Uh, Alberto Felitti. He is um, he's joined us today. Um, he's from the Modena University Hospital, Italy. He will be talking about the navigation of the cerebral aqueduct and the fourth ventricle. Dr. Alberto, could you please screen share and uh, start your presentation? Can you yes. hear us well? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. Let's see. Yes, you're well uh, connected. Yep. Yeah, good. So. Okay, can you see my presentation? Yes. Yeah, we can see that. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Very good. So, uh, good morning yes. to everyone. Um, yes. My name Go is ahead. Alberto Felici. Uh, I am a neurosurgeon working in Italy, in Modena, 
uh, which is a city in the north part of Italy. I have been a fellow uh, with Professor Yoko Kato two years ago. So I will talk to you today uh, about the navigation of the cerebral aqueduct and fourth ventricle with a flexible endoscope. Uh, as, you, as you all know, uh, in the past, uh, ancient Greeks uh, thought that the world was flat. And they also thought that the Western uh, limit, the Western border of world was constituted by the pillars of Hercules, which is a place that nowadays we know as the Strait of Gibraltar between Spain and Morocco. So it was forbidden uh, for human beings to move over that limit because it was considered dangerous and nothing could be found besides water. And for many years, uh, the cerebral aqueduct has been considered like uh, uh, the pillars of Hercules for neurosurgeons and for neuroendoscopists. Even after the introduction of the flexible scope, so only uh, the additum of the aqueduct could be seen, as you can see from these two pictures. But in uh, the recent years, we and other groups showed that it is actually possible to navigate the cerebral aqueduct with a flexible endoscope. And it is possible if you are, of course, uh, uh, if you have a good expertise in handling an endoscope and if the uh, cerebral aqueduct is not stenotic, of course. It is possible in a safe way. This is a short video showing you the navigation now of the third ventricle. This is the abenural commissure posterior commissure, the additum of the cerebral aqueduct that we are actually uh, passing now. Now we are navigating through the aqueduct. And finally, we enter the fourth ventricle and we can see the choroidal plexus of the fourth ventricle, cerebellum uh, here, and the Magendi foramen. So uh, this is possible with a flexible scope. Uh, what can be done with flexible scope? Many things actually. Uh, of course, third ventriculostomies and biopsies, <clears throat> but I will not talk about that to you today because uh, it's possible to do these procedures also with rigid scopes. I don't know if my presentation moves on. Okay, so I will skip this part because it's possible to do that only also with a rigid scope. What else can be done? Uh, in some selected cases, we can uh, aspirate, like in this case that we published, we can use the working channel of the flexible scope as a sucker and we can remove uh, the tumor if the tumor of course is small not more than two centimeters and soft and we can remove these tumors from the posterior part of the third ventricle and also from the aqueduct what else we can manage uh, arachnoid cysts <clears throat> look at this case Uh, this patient had a huge cistern already in the fourth ventricle. We are sliding our endoscope in between the roof of the third of the fourth ventricle and the floor of the ventricle. This is the brain stem, of course. See how narrow it is because of the compression of the cyst. And then finally, we see the Canalis centralis medullaris here, and pi, and then the wall of the cyst, which is here. We always check very carefully uh, the wall of the cyst to see if it is transparent, because it's important to uh, try to understand what's behind the wall before making the first hole, which is this. Okay, we made the first hole in the wall of the cyst. Then uh, usually we try to 
uh, enlarge this hole uh, with a balloon or sometimes we try to shrink uh, the wall of the cyst using monopolar coagulation. This is the final view with the Magendi foramen cisterna magna, which is free now. And we are withdrawing the endoscope. You can see how much larger the ventricle is after the fenestration. It gained a normal anatomy again. Then, of course, we performed also a third ventriculostomy in this patient. Uh, also, aqueductoplasty can be performed with flexible scope. When I talk about aqueductoplasty, I'm not saying I am Okay, I think we have a little freezing of the Wi-Fi. Can you hear me, anybody? I, I can hear you, Dr. John. Okay, yeah, we're having a freezing there of the, uh, okay. of the presentation. Are you Hello? there, uh, Hera? Oh, can you? Can, yeah, okay, can you go hear ahead. Me? Yeah, go ahead, Albert. Continue. Okay, I don't know uh, what part you missed. I was talking about aqueductal stenosis. Uh, we treat uh, with uh, transaqueductal navigation only those stenosis that are uh, due to membranes. Doctor, like uh, this well, case, Dr. Alberto, look, sorry to disturb yeah? you. Actually, your uh, slides are not shown. They are not shared. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Let me check. Yeah, you're not sharing it. What's yeah. the problem? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up, Disha. Wait. <laughs> Right. Uh, let me see if I can share again. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, sorry. But I, sorry. I'm in China right now and the connection is really is okay. really bad. It's okay, we're getting through. So we can see it now. Okay, let's see if I can make it work. Can you see it? Uh, yes, we can. Okay. okay. So you can see. Okay. Yes. yes. So here in this video, uh, I uh, did a per you can. Okay. In this video, I did a perforation of a thin membrane, which was of uh, the cerebral aqueduct. Of course, I used a balloon fenestration, and then uh, you can actually navigate the fourth ventricle. In this case, we know I guess we have another delay by the uh, Wi-Fi connection of uh, Alberto, I believe he's yeah, in Rus he, Russia now. He, Go ahead, Hera. Yeah, there was a problem with his connection because of uh, the, this firewall thing. So I think he's having trouble with the internet connection at the moment. Okay. I think we just wait for a while until he gets back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It came through the last time. This is the unfortunate part of Wi-Fi. It's inconsistent. We didn't ever know if it's going to work. So Alberta's in Russia now. Or China yeah. now. He's in China. Can you, can you hear me, Albert, Alberto? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you you dropped off you dropped off there at the end of your presentation. You want to finish it off? Oh, okay, okay. Can you can you see my presentation yeah, right yeah, now? I, now I can. Okay, you got a screen share. 
Okay, okay. So I was saying that in this case, uh, it was very dangerous to perform a third ventriculostomy because uh, the brainstem was pushed against the clivus and also the basilar artery was uh, obstructing mm -hmm. our Dr. view. Dr. So, Alberto, sorry to yeah. interrupt you. Again, the slides yeah. or not? The slides, we are not seeing the slides. It's not shared. Oh my God, wait. Uh, let me check again. <clears throat> Let's try again. There we go. Okay, you can see them. Yes, now. we can. Yes, we can. Okay, in this case, uh, we considered the third ventriculostomy to be uh, pretty dangerous. So we navigated through the cerebral aqueduct and we noticed the obstruction of the Magendi foramen and we did the Magendi plasty. And uh, the outcome of the patient was very well. Um, but I think the most interesting uh, application of uh, flexible scope is the aspiration of intraventricular blood hemorrhage. As you know, intraventricular hemorrhage is a very uh, challenging disease with a high, very high mortality rate. Uh, the standard treatment is external ventricular drainage. Of course, it's a very simple uh, procedure and it uh, um, allows a fast resolution of acute hydrocephalus but it must very often be bilateral. It frequently obstructs, and you have to wait a long time before the, uh, the blood is washed out. So the stay at the hospital is very long, and you can have many complications. We showed that uh, removing uh, interventricular clots with a flexible scope decreases mortality and decreases VP shunt dependency in these patients. So just uh, some examples. See, this is a preoperative scan of this patient with intraventricular uh, hemorrhage and after <clears throat> endoscopic uh, treatment, uh, we can obtain a complete uh, resolution of this interventricular hemorrhage. Notice the fourth ventricle, which is completely free of blood in this case. This is possible only with flexible scopes, so using the operative channel of the scope as a sucker and with a very uh, simple instrumentation like a syringe to do aspiration and of course, a ringer lactate for irrigation. The access is a frontal precoronal bar hole, which must not be too lateral. Otherwise, it's difficult to uh, introduce your endoscope in the cerebral aqueduct. Just two maneuvers are important for this uh, surgery. Irrigation to uh, make the field more clear and aspiration to remove the clots, of course. Uh, initially, this kind of surgery can be very frustrating because you can see uh, only red when you enter the ventricles, of course. You see only blood, but finally some landmarks appear, like this, in this case, uh, the choroid plexus. And you have to follow the choroid plexus until you see uh, the Monroe foramen. And then you keep doing uh, aspirations and irrigations until you uh, set the third ventricle completely free, free of, of blood, like in this case here, the optic chiasm. Then you direct uh, the endoscope uh, to the posterior part of the third ventricle, uh, and then you keep doing aspirations and irrigations. And finally, you will see here the aqueduct, the aditum of the cerebral aqueduct, posterior commissure, abenolar commissure. You can even see uh, the uh, roof of the third ventricle. And then, of course, you have to enter the cerebral aqueduct and aspirate the blood from the fourth ventricle. And finally, after the, the aspiration, the complete aspiration of the blood, you will be able to see the Lushka foramen with its choroid plexus and also uh, the uh, Magendi foramen. Uh, in some cases, we perform coiling and neuroendoscopy in a very uh, short time. So you can obtain, the, you can secure the aneurysm, of course, with coiling, and you can obtain the resolution of intraventricular hemorrhage in a very, uh, in a very short time. Uh, look at this case, basilar artery aneurysm. Uh, it was coiled, and then after neuroendoscopy, uh, see the blood uh, is completely uh, uh, disappeared from uh, the ventricles, even from the fourth ventricle. Uh, 
in very selected cases, we can navigate the server aqueduct uh, from the fourth ventricle. In this case, uh, we operated this patient uh, with a, a tumor in the posterior fossa in a prone position with a microsurgical technique. Uh, it was a very bleedy tumor. Uh, so at the end of the surgery, we wanted to inspect uh, the uh, ventricular system with a flexible scope. So now we are in the fourth ventricle and we are entering the cerebral aqueduct from the fourth ventricle. This is a very unusual view. This is the aqueduct. And in a few seconds, uh, we are gonna see the third ventricle. This, this is the posterior commissure. And this is the additum of the cerebral aqueduct. <clears throat> we entered the third ventricle and actually we have seen a blood clot. Of course, in the prone position, blood uh, for gravity can enter the uh, cerebral aqueduct and the, th the third ventricle and it's a uh, potential, uh, it's a potential danger because uh, these clots uh, after surgery can obstruct the cerebral aqueduct and give acute hydrocephalus. So we aspirated these blood clots from the third ventricle. You can uh, arrive until the Monroe foramen, like you can see in this case, we aspirated blood from uh, the Monroe foramen. And with the same technique I showed you before, is aspirations and irrigations, uh, we finally obtain uh, the complete release of blood from the third ventricle with a very uh, unusual anatomy. Here you can see the two uh, foramen, foramina, the, the anterior commissure and the infundibulum. Here, this is the optic chiasm. Okay, and just to conclude, uh, if we uh, use uh, fluorescent sodium, intravenously injected fluorescent sodium and a special uh, filter for the camera of the scope, we are able to see what is otherwise impossible to see inside the ventricles. Uh, the first anatomical structure that we can see with this technique is the subependymal vascular network. Here you can see the choroid plexus. Uh, which become fluorescent. And here, I don't know if it is possible for you to see uh, this uh, tiny uh, vascular subependymal network, which is impossible to see with normal light. But uh, probably, and I will finish with this uh, slide, uh, the most interesting application of fluorescence is to uh, detect the presence of the circumventricular organs, which uh, are a very uh, strange structures uh, that cannot be seen with normal lights. Here, the, this is the tuber scenario with fluorescence. You can see area postrema, uh, sorry. You can see the median eminence and also the organum vasculosum lamina terminalis. This is lamina terminalis. Again, tuber scenario and median eminence appearing with fluorescence. And beyond the pillars of Hercules, actually, so in the fourth ventricle, we can also see a circumventricular organ, which is located in the inferior triangle of the fourth ventricle. Here we are entering the fourth ventricle, choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle, and now with fluorescent mode, you can see these two leaves. This is the area postrema of the fourth ventricle, which is not possible to see with normal life. This is the canalis centralis medullaris. Okay, thank you very much. And sorry for the technical problems. That's okay. That was a nice presentation, Dr. Alberto. We are glad you made in time. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions, any comments from uh, the panelists for Dr. Alberto? Dr. Alberto? Um, yes, Dr. Was, Tivia. Uh, yeah, it was very impressive. 
and uh, seeing this circumventricular arrogance like uh, yeah it was very good so one uh, one thing i i want to know from you like uh, you remove the intraventricular hemorrhage through the endoscope using the flexible endoscope and uh, means what is the outcome like does it reduce the uh, means what is the better outcome you saw like uh, removal of the blood clot without removing and with removing is there any difference in the occurrence of hydrocephalus or yeah <coughs> what so make I, uh, what difference it makes like just yeah, want to know we we perform the comparison uh, between patients uh, uh, treated with endoscope endoscopy and patient treated just with uh, uh, external ventricular drainage. Uh, and we noticed that uh, the length of stay in ICU was shorter for patients uh, with endoscopy. We also noticed that uh, the outcome was better. Uh, we used the, uh, the Glasgow outcome scale uh, to perform this analysis. And we also noticed the decrease in VP shunt dependency in patients uh, treated with uh, neuroendoscopy. Of course, there is a bias in our comparison because uh, we compared patients uh, uh, which were treated with uh, ETV uh, years ago because after the introduction of the flexible scope, uh, okay. we always use flexible scope uh, for interventricular hemorrhage. So mm -hmm. there is a you know time shift between one group of patients and the other group of patients. Okay. But okay. there are evidences in literature that endoscopy can actually improve the outcome of these patients. Okay, okay. and uh, means once you go in, like, uh, did you uh, encounter any complication because everything is red? Like any any complication which you encountered with the uh, endoscope? Uh, yeah, uh, of course uh, the major possible uh, complication is intraoperative bleeding. Uh, but uh, in my experience, and not only in my experience, also in the experience of my uh, former uh, mentor, uh, who taught me how to use the flexible scope, uh, if you encounter a bleeding uh, in the ventricle, uh, you don't have to panic. You just need to keep doing irrigation. So irrigate, irrigate, and wait, irrigate, and wait. Uh, I always, I was always able to uh, stop the bleeding just with irrigation. Okay, fine. And um, like, how do you uh, change the direction of the flexible scope? Like, uh... Uh, okay, good question. Uh, you know, the flexible scope has a uh, like a handle uh, you can use uh, to move the tip this way up and down. So for okay. up and down movements, uh, you can use uh, this tool, which is uh, controllable with your hand. Okay. But uh, also you can, uh, you can use uh, the other hand to slightly rotate uh, the, the endoscope. So you can change okay. this okay. direction, okay, rotational direction. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Alberto. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Divya. Any other question or any comments from anyone else? Uh, Dr. Alberta, thank you for presentation. It's amazing, it's cool. And uh, I have a question. Um, can, can we use this flexible endoscope for transnasal operations? Transnasal, transnasal. Um, well, I think you can, but uh, I don't think it would be the best tool. I uh, do uh, transnasal, transphenoidal surgery with rigid scope. You know, rigid scope. Uh, um, it has a much better view. Uh, probably you noticed from my from my videos that the vision is not very clear like a rigid endoscope because this endoscope is made with uh, fibers, you know, fiber optics. Um, however, in I think one year, one year and a half ago, both uh, um, Olympus and Storz introduced a new flexible endoscope with a chip on the tip. So now the vision is like a microscope. Uh, however, you know, uh, I, I really think that you need a flexible scope if you have to deal with a complex geometrical anatomy like the ventricular system. But if you have a very straight way, like for transphenoidal surgery, uh, I don't think there is any need to change 
uh, from rigid scope to flexible scope, even because the, f the flexible scope has a smaller uh, working can canal. Um, so I think maybe you can use flexible scope at the end of transphenoidal surgery if you want to inspect some hidden corners of the surgical field. But I would not suggest to move from rigid to flexible scope for transphenoidal surgery. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay. okay, thank you so much, Dr. Alberto. Uh, could you, you please um, uh, stop the screen sharing and we proceed with the next speaker? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and. Ye yes, and, yes. Okay. And I have to I have to say goodbye to all of you because I have another meeting to attend here in China. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining and making it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Next we have uh, Professor Cherian uh, from Nepal. He's uh, the director of the Nobel Institute of Neurosciences, uh, Birat Nagar, and uh, right now he's with me in the Arctic. Uh, he will be giving a talk on um, robotics and neurosurgery. So here you go, sir. Thank you, Hira. Hey, guys. Good to see you all. Hey, John. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I... Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was supposed to give this talk in Brazil a uh, couple of months back, but I couldn't make it to Brazil because... Uh, um, you know, two days before the Brazil meeting, I was in Ireland, so it was a bit of a difficulty to go to Brazil as well. But I'm very happy that I can give this talk here. Now, I don't want to go into technical details because if uh, on an online talk, especially in the afternoon, if I'm going to technical details, I mean, that'll just uh, get people to sleep more. So I'm just going to be telling people as as to where we are and what we are capable of, okay? That's, that's exactly what I want to tell you guys. So, and I'll tell you what, where we are with our robotics project. So we are doing uh, something with the University of Alicante and uh, uh, probably uh, getting some investment from some Chinese company. So we will tell you as to what we are doing uh, at the moment. There's no point talking about robotics when you're doing nothing. Uh, everybody can do that, right? It's like talking on aneurysm surgery if you're not doing aneurysms. So, so let me share my screen and I'll be able to show you as to this one. Okay, share. Right. Can you see this? Can you all see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. So, robotics in your surgery. That's our present uh, one of our three operation rooms. Uh, so we have John has been there. So we have everything was what Albert has to in two men. So we have a navigable pentero microscope. Um, we have the OAM for spine and skull base. We use it for spine and skull base. We have the three test line drop MRI with I7 navigation um, where we could uh, do all the functional images and then navigate with uh, that. We also have the endoscopy suite with the robotic arm. So, so this is current neurosurgery. We, I mean, in, in my place right now, we have everything what the other places anywhere in the world would have. So the navi I mean, we could uh, get the three test line drop, MRI, uh, the fibers, or the skull base with the OAM, fuse everything, and bring it to my microscope for uh, uh, picture in picture, so that I can navigate before even uh, the head is opened. I put the microscope. I know where the tumor is. I know where the aneurysm is. I would know where to open. So uh, this is something that we have right now at the moment, but. Um, you know, in India, you say dil mange more, which means you need more. Okay. So, um, is this where we are actually at with respect to, I mean, with respect to neurosurgery, this is the best we can get. But is this actually 
where we should draw boundaries and say, yes, this is the best in neurosurgery? No. So I am going to show you some of the robots, and then you will understand what the capability of robots are. And then I'll show you uh, the surgical robots where people have attempted, and then due to this, uh, you know, um, FDAs and everything, by the time you try to get an approval, it'll take 10 years, and by that time, it'll be primitive. So that's why everything in medical field gets to be primitive almost 10 years off uh, before you can start human trials. I'm not saying this is a disadvantage. Of course, you have to check things before you start it and uh, start operating, but uh, this puts you at a major disadvantage. So let's see what robotics and artificial intelligence um, can actually do. So first thing is visualization. This is the robot that we have made. I'll show you the visualization robot in the, in the uh, last slide of this presentation. I'll be happy to show you how visualization. You see, now you have a huge microscope in your front. Okay, you're operating with a huge microscope. The navigation is separate. So it is not linked to, I have the picture in picture for navigation, but the microscope visualization is not the navigation visualization. This has to change. So you will have to change it into a place where the virtual image and the real image has to be fused, just like a pilot lands his airplane in fog. So when you have fog, the pilot uh, has a virtual image. So he doesn't have to worry about seeing actually the airport and then landing. So because he can see the virtual image and land. So if the aneurysm takes off, I mean, it, um, the aneurysm uh, bleeds, you, you should be able to clip it because you should be able to see it. Virtual image, you should be able to see. This is one thing where we can fuse visualization and navigation for a real, true uh, versus a virtual image. Then you can have a robot like a Franca Amica. I'll be showing Franca Amica where you can have it as a surgeon's assistant. You know, um, I, I use both my hands. I, I'm proud to be ambidextrous, but then I often, I often wish that I had two more arms. You know, when you're operating, your assistant is not exactly in sync with you, then uh, it's a big problem. So you think that you should have one more or two more arms. A robot can do that. Remote surgery and robotic neurosurgery suite is two ideas which I wouldn't really talk about, but maybe sometime later, I would show you as to what I mean. But let's see the basic things. Now, I'm going to show you starting from craniotomy. Can a robot do a craniotomy? Can a robot do a craniotomy? Is it too complex for a robot? No, it is not. So you must see what is RoboSculpt. There's already there. Complex shapes are being drilled out by this robot. This is a huge industrial robot. We're starting here. So a craniotomy is not difficult for a robot. If you, if you can show on the virtual image as to what to do, if you can show on the virtual image, this robot sculpt is sculpting clay. Okay. And you see what it's making. You see how, how the robot sculpt makes things. Okay. So a craniotomy can easily be done. I mean, there are things to do uh, laser craniotomies now, but forget laser craniotomies with drills. The robot can do a craniotomy maybe less than 10 seconds. Now, I'm going to show you Franca Amica. This is a robot that we are very interested in. We want to work with this platform. It's a $10,000 robot. We hope to have one soon. You see that? It can interact so beautifully. And it's so precise. You show it what to do. You show the robot to do something. And with AI, it can learn. So... It is an assistant which will ever improve, like your assistant, sometimes who will not keep on improving. This Franca Amica is a robot who can keep on improving. 
You show it something, it will learn it. Okay? So, it can be used for many tasks, but amongst its many tasks, it can be a surgeon's assistant. Okay? So, that's Franca. Next, I'm going to show you what AI can do in weaponry. Okay? So, don't worry about this video. Don't worry about this video, but uh, I mean, I put it because in military technology, AI is being used extensively for facial recognition. It can even, uh, the small drone can even go and identify and deal with one, one person. So, you see, it can, it can react 100 times faster than a human. It can recognize faces. It can make its own flight path and see that. You think this is far away? You think this is far away that it can be used in this kind of things could be used in neurosurgery? No, because the problem is nobody wants to. Nobody wants to change. The robotics that the present day robotics that neurosurgery is using, let me show you. The new Zeiss Kinevo. Compared to what we saw, compared to what we saw, I will sorry. The Zeiss Kinevo is the new size microscope. Robotic position, surgeon control robotics. At present, this is the best visualization robot that neurosurgery has. At present, this is the best visualization neuro, neuro, I mean, neurosurgical robot that we have. And, uh, you know, to be, to be frank, it's a joke because the capability of uh, uh, robots in neurosurgery, it can be much more. Let me show you something. This is the Da Vinci system. Okay, another robot, which is again, which was used extensively in uh, urology and now being used by Polo Porto de Mello and his uh, group in Brazil for uh, neurosurgery. A modification of this is being used in neurosurgery. But again, this is a very primitive robot. Very primitive. And let's see the neuro arm. The only robot which actually made a lot of news by operating on a patient, my friend, good friend, Garnet Sutherland uh, from Calgary, who's been instrumental in uh, making this robot. So let's see this robot. That's Garnet and his team. That's his uh, operating theater. That's a robot. So Garnet is sitting in a control room and he can operate this robot remotely. See that? He's got touch sensors. And he's operating this robot. It can eliminate tremor. It can do very precise maneuvering through small, very small uh, windows or uh, very small corridors. And it's interop MRI guided, IMRIS uh, interop MRI guided. But, but this never really took off. The NeuroArm uh, didn't sell too much because, uh, you know, there were many points which were 
um, which were not really an advantage. Now, I would like you to see this video. Okay, this is not an exaggeration. I want you to see the entire video here. This is uh, Timo Ball playing with a KUKA robot for table tennis. If any of you would have played table tennis, you wouldn't understand the kind of spins, the kind of speed, and the kind of skill that you require for playing table tennis. And this robot is playing with the world champion. So see this, and then you will be able to understand as to what this robot is capable of. Uh, you ever thought that table tennis playing is just, uh, you know, uh, touching the ball and putting it over the net? This guy is using side spin, top spin, back spin, and the KUKA robot is able to adjust its, its bat incline in such a way and the bat speed in such a way that it's able to combat. If you're playing a, a professionally good table tennis player, let me assure you, for the first two years, you wouldn't have a cue as to where the ball is going to go. But the KUKA robot is able to adjust this. I was very impressed. I played table tennis, so I was really, really impressed with this. So that was the video where the robot is playing the table tennis. But let's come back to my project, what I'm doing right now with the University of Alicante. So I will show you the visualization robot where we have uh, two of these robots, one with a normal camera, like a microscope camera, and one with an endoscopic camera, both providing us a hyper-realistic image. Uh, we can fuse this into one to get a hyper-realistic image or have one by one. So this robot can be controlled by just head movements. I will show you that. This is the first prototype, which is already ready. Uh, we want to replace this big robot with uh, something like Franca Emika so that instead of microscope and endoscope and navigation, we would have just one tool. And we call it the visualization robot. And there will no, be, no more be any 3D screens because we would have it on the head mounted. Uh, I mean, we will have it on glasses. So anybody who's watching, anybody who's watching anywhere in the world can, with these glasses, can see what the surgeon sees. This is the precision, and I will show you how we control it. See that? This is Alvaro, our engineer. Alvaro is controlling it with his head movements. We have, uh, we have put a S7 navigation system. We, we literally, I mean, I must not say this, but we hacked it, and we uh, got it into the system and see the glions, we are using it for um, head control. 
So wherever the surgeon looks, the robot looks. And we can have a fire, we can have firewalls, which means there are places where the robot shouldn't come to, to obstruct the surgeon. We can do all that. So this is where we are with our robot. But my dream is to make a complete uh, robotic suite where the table is robotic, um, where the surgeon's assistants are uh, robotic, the visualization device is robotic, the tools are robotic, except the surgeon, everything is robotic. The surgeon is at the center, and then we have a suite. It will be a big dream because it uh, needs the kind of funding that you require is not small. So um, we need somebody like Google to fund it. So we're trying to pitch our ideas to uh, many companies in China and see what we can do. We can, uh, we want to start off at this point. So, but I'm sure in uh, 10 to 15 years, this would be the future. Uh, robotics would be the future. I mean, there'll be surgeries which a lot of surgeons cannot do. So for example, we were doing a petroclival meningioma three, four days back. And, uh, uh, you know, anterolateral skull base is not a new territory for us. We're pretty good at that. But uh, sometimes the kind of difficulties that we have with the petroclival meningioma we would wish that we had a robotic arm or we would wish that we had some tools where we could uh, accelerate the drilling for the Petrus Apex or do something more, seeing everything together, uh, we wished. So I'm sure this would be the future. And uh, I would like to sign off with that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Cherian. Any comments, any questions from the panel for him? It's, it's, it's very impressive, sir. So, thanks for the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Ayub. Uh, so, uh, what name is the last robot? Uh, what name, name is last? I didn't get your question. Last, last slide, uh, last robot, uh, which move with uh, glasses? What name? Yeah. Name. What name? Name. Yes. Well, we have named we have named it visualization robot. Visualization robot. We have named it. I mean, it's uh, um, it's our robot, so we have named it visualization robot. Viz robot. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Doctor Leonardo? Would you like to ask? Yes, I have a question. I know when you use robots. <clears throat> I'm sorry, when you use robots, you need to use software. And when you use software, you are under the control of the engineer. And why you can train these engineers to do a very good software? I mean, you know, the engineers are not physicians, are not medical. Them is is it's not easy to try to combine to mix these two different worlds, medicine and engineering. Them. What is your plan for this mistake, for this problem, for this trouble? I know I was in Calgary a few months back. I mean, sorry, not Calgary. I was in uh, Alicante, where the robot is. I, a few months back, I was there. And uh, it's very difficult to make the engineers understand as to what we want. It's, it's true. But it's not, um, it's not that it's not doable. We can do it. Um, they are advancing in many other fields with robotics. I mean, if you search for Boston Scientific Robots, there are robots which can even do a complete flip, uh, a robot which can walk over uneven surfaces and then uh, climb stairs or do a complete flip and stand up on its two legs. So it's all possible. So only thing is we are not using, we are not utilizing this in neurosurgery. So if uh, the kind of skills that is being shown in robotics can come to neurosurgery, it will be a revolution. It'll be the future of neurosurgery. Yes, yes. I think it's a long work too. It's, it's, just, the, it's just the beginning right now. Yeah, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so we proceed with our next uh, talk. Dr. Sandeep Talari um, from India. He will be talking about cerebrovascular bypass surgery, a beginner's perspective. Dr. Sandeep? No, Dr. Sandeep, 
can you please share your screen? Yes, you unmute. Yeah, you you are muted, Doctor Sandeep. Yes, Doctor Sandeep. We are not able to hear you. Hear me now? Yeah, it's it's very low. Your voice is uh, very low. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, you can uh, moderate. Okay. I'll carry on. Sure. Okay. Um, I am Dr. Sandeep from uh, India. Uh, I was in Fujita. Dr. Sandeep, your voice is very low. Can you please uh, speak near the microphone? Yeah, yeah. So I am Dr. Sandeep from India. Can you hear me? Uh, we cannot hear you well. Can you please uh, speak? near the microphone <laughs> yeah i am pretty near the microphone can you hear me now no it's it's very low actually are you using a headset yeah yeah i'm using a headset um, but it's uh, it's really low <laughs> yeah oh, can you hear me now can you hear me now yeah 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 that's better that's better yeah yeah uh, uh, I'm Dr. from uh, india uh, I was in uh, Fujita in 2015 for six months, and uh, after that, uh, staying there, I got interested in bypass surgery, and then I went to Dr. Takizawa's place for uh, three months again to learn bypass surgery. So I think uh, I can speak a, a, a few for a few minutes on bypass surgery. I mean, I think I have the eligibility. Okay. So I thought this seminar was for uh, beginners and uh, residents and uh, medical students. So this presentation is uh, pretty basic. Uh, so, so bypass surgery is not something uh, which is very new. Uh, actually, it was performed 50 years ago, nearly 51 years ago, by Proctor Yasargil uh, in Zurich. And uh, before performing on, uh, before performing his first case on humans, he has done uh, a lot of animal experiments. And after that, he has done his uh, first SCA MCA bypass. And after he has performed the first surgery, there uh, there was a decade of bypass surgeries. People were doing uh, bypass surgeries left and right. But uh, initially they were done for a large number of uh, cerebrovascular occlusive disease patients. And the patients were not properly categorized. Uh, and so there were many failures. And uh, in 1980, there was a study uh, known as a European Cooperative Study for Stroke. And they have found that, that uh, the bypass surgery was uh, of no great benefit for, uh, uh, for stroke. So after that, in the after the 1980s, the number of bypass surgeries decreased because of medical and endovascular therapy options. And uh, as the surgeries decreased, uh, the expertise decreased. And uh, so uh, the present generation of surgeons, uh, they are not very well versed with bypass surgery. So And now there is a resurgence of bypass surgery because the indications have been widened. And more and more people are now uh, learning bypass surgery. So the aims of bypass surgery uh, in cerebrovascular bypass is preservation of cerebral blood flow. As, and when you like in a uh, joint aneurysm and you plan to trap ligate it or uh, in a skull based tumor, etc., or augmentation of cerebral blood flow, like when you have an occlusive disease of uh, cerebrovascular. So, the present day indications for uh, cerebrovascular bypass surgery are unclippable aneurysms, uh, like joint aneurysms, uh, blister aneurysms, fusiform aneurysms of ICA, and previously coiled aneurysms, which are neither. Uh, amenable for recoiling or uh, clipping. So the other options are Moya Moya disease uh, where as a direct revascularization method instead of indirect revascularization. And for skull based tumors with vascular encasement like uh, cavernous sinus meningiomas, chordomas, etc. And for cerebrovascular occlusive disease also, if the patient is properly selected, bypass can, surgery can be of use for, as for uh, recurrent TIA and intracranial or extracranial carotid occlusion. So the types of bypass uh, can be categorized as four types. The type one is uh, using an interposition vein graft. Uh, for example, if the petrous carotid artery is blocked uh, uh, by stenosis or by a skull-based tumor, you can uh, put a saphenous vein graft and anastomose it proximally and distally to the block. So this type of bypass is known as skull-based bypass, and it is a very difficult procedure, and it is less preferred now. So the second type of uh, the type two is extracranial to intracranial bypass using the short uh, saphenous venous graft or the radial artery graft. And this is also presently known as the high flow bypass graft. 
Okay. And the third type is the extracranial to intracranial bypass using the salt artery. Uh, two types of uh, bypasses are there. The superficial temporal artery can be used or the occipital artery can be used. And these are the low flow bypasses. And the size 4 bypass is direct intracranial bypass where you anastomosis both uh, intracranial vessels like you do the pica pica by uh, anastomosis or the a3 a3 anastomosis or the m2 m2 anastomosis so a few points to know before uh, uh, going to the further slide uh, and to know when to use, use which type of bypass uh, a few basic points which you know you should know is that uh, normal blood flow of mci is around 250 ml per minute so uh, dr sandeep sorry to interrupt can you please uh, be a little bit uh, louder because it's really getting low the so, uh, yeah yeah the normal flow of mci is around 250 ml per minute so if you know this uh, the normal flow of each vessel in in the brain then you know to use which type of uh, bypass because the blood flow uh, through the saphenous vein graft is around 70 to 140 ml per minute and it may increase up to 250 ml per minute so if you need to put a high flow by use a high flow bypass then you have to use a saphenous vein graft or a radial artery graft which has a lower flow than uh, a saphenous vein graft the radial artery graft has a flow of around 40 to 70 ml per minute and a normal sta has a flow of around 15 to 30 ml per minute uh, it is the same with occipital artery but it can increase with time after a few months after bypass so the other types uh, other types of classification is like end to side bypass it, it is the sta mca and side to side uh, like the a3a3 and high flow it can also be categorized into high flow bypass and low flow bypass so the investigations for a case uh, uh, plans for bypass require, depends on actual uh, the diagnosis primary diagnosis of the patient whether it is being done for an aneurysm or uh, for a carotid occlusive disease or for a uh, tumor and all. So the basic investigations are MRI brain, plane and contrast, CT angiography, DSA, head scan and CT perfusion. So for preparing for a bypass uh, for a young neurosurgeon, practice is very important. So the main things are pra keep practicing and good technique is needed to decrease the risk of thrombosis and minimize the occlusion time. Uh, the occlusion time of less than 25 minutes is the preferred occlusion time and instruments with the basic instruments which you require for uh, performing or practicing a bypass is you should have jeweler's forceps micro needle holder and suture materials from age 0 to 11 0 epilon so uh, a variety of uh, uh, commercial microscopes are available for neurosurgery and for practicing bypass and this is one model there is another model in zeiss also this is a leica s9 microscope which can be bought for around two thousand dollars and uh, it is good for uh, practicing microvascular anastomosis so a few basic instruments like two jewelers forceps one uh, uh, scissors and one needle holder would help and uh, for performing deep bypass like uh, a3 a3 bypass or uh, anastomosis to pca you need much longer instruments than the regular uh, jewelers forceps so this is one variation of jeweler's forceps where you, the length is longer and you here you can see the tip is also curved which helps in uh, anastomosing in the deep so and also you need this rubber uh, rubber uh, with uh, one cent one millimeter markings to place under the re recipient vessel this also helps in knowing the size of the arteriotomy and this also helps in you can measure the size of the arteriotomy the regular arteriotomy length is around uh, 3 to 4 millimeters and other instrument other equipment which you need uh, are a doppler and icg to check for the flow after the bypass so uh, uh, this is a microscope that i have at my home which i use for practicing uh, uh, practicing and these are the basic instruments that i have at a home for practicing two jewelers forceps one micro scissors and uh, uh, one microscope and this is sufficient and anyone can practice at home whenever you find time so there are different types of artificial blood vessels uh, which are available for uh, practice uh, this is by the moranaka company it is a plastic uh, plastic uh, type of blood vessel but it doesn't give the actual tactile feeling it doesn't give the actual tactile feeling of a blood vessel and much better is the kisslex kisslex company's uh, blood vessels which are uh, which come in various sizes 1 mm 1.5 mm and 2 mm this gives a good uh, tactile feeling and if you if you finding these materials that uh, is difficult then you can always use a chicken 
leg, the femoral artery, or the chicken wing brachial artery. This is what I use at home to practice whenever I find time a chicken uh, femoral artery or a, uh, a chicken wing. So this is an example of a end to side bypass. So here I will show you some uh, a few videos of uh, uh, practice videos of end to side and end to end and actual videos also. So all of you might be well versed with this, but it would be helpful. So. Here you can see this is a artificial vessel of uh, the Kizlas company. So here uh, we have already prepared the uh, donor vessel. We have already prepared the donor vessel. Tip of the vessel is cut in a uh, cut in an angulated manner, and the angle is around 120 degrees. The angle you can see here is around 120 degrees. And if you consider this as length A, if you consider this as length A, and this as length B, A and B should be similar. The length of A should be equal to length B. And uh, length of arteriotomy, the length of arteriotomy should be equal to A plus B. So here we are using pyoxian blue to, uh, to make the vessel more visible. And we have also stained the distal end of the donor vessel. And uh, now this is this is called as the heel heel of the uh, heel, and this is known as the toe. So initial stitches we take for the from the heel and from the toe, and first we do anchoring suture anchoring suturing, and then we go for the back wall and the front wall suturing. So here we are doing an arteriotomy arteriotomy with the scissors, micro scissors. Once the arteriotomy is done. Uh, we are using uh, 10 0 ethylone and the suture is placed from outside in outside in and uh, for this result from inside to out so the first the heel stitch is placed here and then next the toe stitch is placed or you can even call it as 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock position so once this stitch is placed the next stitch is the uh, toe stitch the ideal situation the ideal type of uh, suture would be to take from the donor vessel and then go to the uh, here uh, it is being done in a reverse manner, but the ideal situation would be to go from the donor and then to the recipient. Outside in and then inside out. So once the heel and the toe stitches are placed, then it is this is the back wall and this is the front wall. Suturing the back wall first would be uh, better as it would be difficult uh, if you suture the front wall first. So once uh, yes. the heel and the toe stitches are placed, the back wall and the front wall can be sutured in a continuous manner or it can be sutured in interrupted manner. So here the uh, back wall sutures are being placed and this is the most important stitch. Uh, uh, the stitch next to the heel or the toe is the most important stitch because it is the site where uh, bleed can occur, I mean uh, leak can occur after the anastomosis. So the first stitch has to be placed very close to the heel or the toe stitch. And th this has to be placed carefully. And after that, uh, interrupted sutures, we uh, prefer interrupted sutures uh, rather than continuous sutures. So the back wall is being sutured. Ideally, uh, eight sutures are required. Ideally, eight sutures are required, but if you cannot place uh, eight sutures, then uh, lesser is also required. So once the back wall is sutured, then we come to the uh, uh, front wall. Uh, these corner stitches are the most important stitches in any anastomosis. So now we complete uh, uh, end to side anastomosis. So, and uh, this is a practice video for a side-to-side -side anastomosis. 
uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, this is uh, like a simulation for A3, A3 bypass. And this rubber dam and the vessels are placed deep within the interhemispheric fissure. This is a silicon model of uh, skull and brain. And deep within the interhemispheric fissure, the uh, rubber dam is placed and uh, two artificial vessels are placed. And uh, for fixation, we use pins. And uh, uh, we are marking here using dye, pyokian blue. And then arteriotomy is done. So once the arteriotomy is done, uh, the back wall has to the back wall is sutured in a continuous manner, and the front wall is sutured in a uh, uh, interrupted manner. Uh, you go from outside in. Here you. Because of the depth, it is a uh, because of the depth bypass is a difficult thing. So once you go in, you suture in a continuous manner. You see, I am. Um, Uh, the back wall is sutured in a continuous manner. For every stitch, you have to pull this thread so that the uh, yeah, there is good locking. So as you near uh, the end, and you come out through this this uh, the other vessel. Uh, if you have entered through this vessel, you come out through the opposite vessel. So I have entered through here. So ideally, I want to come out through here. So now the back wall suturing is complete. And both these threads are left like this after tightening. So it will be uh, tied to the front sutures. So now the back wall suturing is finished. Now anteriorly we place interrupted suture. Uh, because of the depth, the regular jeweler forceps are not sufficient uh, uh, for this type of bypass. A longer type of uh, jeweler forceps are required, as I showed earlier. So this is the first front wall suture, and we tie it, and then try tie to the free thread. So we first tie the uh, front wall suture, and then tie it to the free thread. The same here, at the lower end, and then in between we place interrupted sutures. So I have tied it to the loose end here, and then uh, I go to the lower end. Take a front wall suture, tie it, and then tie to the loose loose thread. So, so you can see here I am tying the loose end of the back wall suture. This is the loose end of the back wall suture, and it is being tied to the uh, free end of the front wall suture. So once the threads are cut, then it is pretty simple. You have to just suture the front uh, front wall of both vessels and in an uh, interrupted manner. So so here we have completed the suturing of the front wall in an interrupted manner.
So this is a uh, small video, small video of an actual case of STI MCA bypass. Uh, this was not performed by me, but it was performed by my, my mentor, Dr. Takizawa. So I am demonstrating his technique here. So uh, there are two ways of uh, isolating the STA. One way is uh, marking out the STA using a Doppler and di incising directly the, the skin over the STA and isolating the STA. The other way is uh, raising a flap and uh, dissecting the STA uh, from the galia, subgalially. So uh, we prefer the subgalial technique. We don't prefer the direct uh, incision of microscopic visualization. You can see the STA is, uh, uh, STA is identified. This is the cutting bipolar forceps. And the skin flap is raised and the STA is uh, being separated. And the uh, one end is cut and it is irrigated with heparinized saline and uh, temporary clip is placed. So then we go for the craniotomy. Uh, we open the dura. And then we find a suitable vessels. The ideal vessel uh, for as a recipient should be at least one millimeter uh, in size, one millimeter of diameter. So uh, in this case, we are uh, doing a double bypass uh, that is double barrel bypass. Uh, so we have identified two uh, M M4 vessels and uh, uh, placed the rubber dams under the uh, M4 vessels. So, and next, uh, next is the preparation of the donor. Next is the preparation of the donor. So the donor, uh, the at least three to four millimeters of the donor distal length should be prepared. Uh, that is uh, all connective tissue for at least three to four millimeters should be removed. And then it is cut, uh, then it is cut uh, in an angulated manner. Angulated manner. And as I showed earlier, uh, fish mouthing is done. So, here, uh, the recipient vessel is being dissected. The arachnoid is uh, the arachnoid is cut, and the recipient vessel at, it should be at least of one millimeter diameter. So suitable vessel should be identified. And if you cannot find a suitable vessel within your craniotomy, um, Doctor Sandeep, I'm sorry for the interruption, but we are running a little behind time. So if you can just yeah, wind it up in yeah. the next a couple of minutes, please. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, here you can see the anastomosis being uh, done. And finally, the uh, clips are being removed. So this is a video of hyplo bypass, but I cannot show it uh, because of uh, lack of time. Uh, if someone is interested, I can forward it to them if they send me their mail ID. So in the conclusion, uh, the cases for bypass have to be chosen very carefully. Otherwise, you will uh, experience a lot of failures with bypass. And the occlusion time has to be minimum, preferably less than 25 minutes. And technique should be very gentle uh, to prevent occlusion of the graft. And this is a picture of uh, Dr. Takizawa uh, teaching me how to do bypass. Uh, and after teaching, uh, I'm performing it. So this is a picture uh, taken when I was in, uh, two, it was in 2015 in Fujita. Uh, thank you all for patient hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions? Anything regarding uh, bypass? Any any comments from the panel? Um, yes, okay. I have a question. Uh, what kind of material you use to practice in the laboratory? I mean, this is small kind of basils. What is what kind of material you use? To practice. Uh, uh, when I was in Japan, uh, Professor Takizawa used to give me uh, artificial vessels. Uh, you can check for Kezlex. It is K E Z L E X. K E Z L E X. Oh no, O N O on internet. Okay, it is, okay, uh, it is more like human vessels. It is more like human vessels. The tactile feeling you get while doing an anastomosis is more like uh, uh, a human vessel. But back in India, we don't get this material. So uh, I use uh, chicken leg or uh, wing. OK, thank you. All right, any other question? 
Yeah, it's very good presentation. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep, to okay. uh, to let us know. Yeah, uh, to the practice to bypass us really. Thank you. Dr. Ajay, uh, can you repeat that, please? Can can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can yeah, hear you now. Can you? Yeah, yeah, please repeat that. Yeah, yeah. I I just uh, uh, want to say thank you, Dr. Sandeep, to okay. to let us know about the techniques. How we can? Okay. Yeah, how we can do it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep. Uh, so we proceed with uh, our next uh, speaker, Dr. Thomas Tommy. Uh, he is uh, a neurosurgeon from Indonesia and will be talking about fusion images in neurosurgery. Dr. Thomas. Oh. Uh, good evening. My name is Thomas. Uh, is it a good reception of the song? Yeah, yeah. Sound is fine. You need to share your screen, please. Okay. So, so this is only a, a simple presentation regarding fusion images. So advanced, um, advanced topics has been uh, mentioned by uh, Professor Ipe regarding the, the OR system and uh, robotic neurosurgery. And uh, also Dr. Divya for the CFD. Uh, I just want to mention regarding um, the role of the fusion image in neurosurgery. So it's a uh, simple topics and probably not uh, taking so uh, much time. As a disclaimer, there is no conflict of interest regarding this presentation. And uh, so what we know that technology in neurosurgery is uh, collaborations between engineering science, medical science and information technology. Like engineering, uh, they uh, research and uh, develop all the instruments and all the uh, computer works for diagnostic and also for therapeutic um, uh, therapy. And medical science is also, we know that uh, the science is still growing. So uh, with those collaborations will uh, make uh, a good difference like for, um, I mean, for advancement of the, uh, our uh, medical health. So for history, um, X-rays was uh, founded by uh, Wilhelm Ronson about eight, nine, uh, 1895, but CT scan was uh, developed by uh, Hounsfield and then MRI by Lutterberg around 1973. So there are no development between those times until the present uh, that change our approach to the treatment of uh, uh, illness, um, especially in neurosurgery. So this is to make it simple, like the progress of technology uh, we can see for an example, television or monitor. Um, uh, in the old days, they use uh, bulb television. And the first time is uh, black and white only. Then they develop colored ones. Bulb television then changed to flat panel television or monitor. As we know, there are uh, there were LCDs, plasma TV, and nowadays uh, LEDs. And also, the definition is uh, getting crispier and more. I mean, higher definition like 4K or ultra high density, or ultra high definition. I mean, but um, this if we compare with the radiology. Um, at first, they use films. Then after that, they develop filmless radiology using digital uh, imaging. 
then they develop pack system for uh, I mean system that uh, you can enter or you can uh, take the data of uh, any radiology in your hospital. And also their monitor of radiology is getting uh, also better by the advancement of technology. So if we combine this modality, then uh, we have to, we can answer the problems or questions that anatomical image are not the same with surgical or microsurgical view. That is the problem. So radiology will give us anatomical image. So they will send uh, AP view or lateral view that those images are not in microsurgical view. So as a neurosurgeon, we have to develop our own approach into uh, for, I mean, for the image. So we process ourselves that uh, those image will confirm, conform with the, our microsurgical approach. So as uh, this is an uh, interesting journal, uh, they, uh, the topic is about image-guided neurosurgery. And uh, image-guided neurosurgery is an, a neurosurgery that is literally guided by the image. So integration of imaging with uh, surgery in the planning, execution, and post-operative assessment. And pre-operative planning fusion is, uh, we can combine CT and ultrasound, we can combine CT and MRI, SPEC and CT, PET, PET or PET or C with CT. Then with uh, a workstation, we can do a co-registration and that is uh, named by fusion images. And acquisition usually uh, this for this presentation, for an example, uh, is being taken in Japan. So they have uh, Philips MRI and, C uh, and CT angiography using uh, uh, 64 slices CT. And also uh, the DICOM is fused in a workstation. The problem in this setting is not just the uh, the device. So I know that many uh, hospitals already have MRI, CT, but the workstation has uh, has a special software for fusion image, and that, that software will cost. Uh, 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 that software is expensive. So this is the co-registration. Um, uh, co-registration process. So MRI and CT, they fuse it in the workstation. And uh, like, if you can see the bottom right corner picture, they uh, diffuse uh, DVI, DW, uh, DWI image with uh, CT and CT angio and this picture, uh, they develop for, uh, to make an approach by uh, developing 3D image to identify important structures to avoid and uh, the target of operation. But this is still, um, this, this picture is uh, are still in anatomical view. So in Japan, uh, I take some example. So this is a case uh, number one, uh, a trigeminal neuralgia case. So if you see the left side, it's uh, dolicoectatic uh, vertebral arteries and basilar arteries. But uh, the problem is on the right side. If you see that there's a pica elongated and um, 
contacted the fifth, uh, the fifth nerve. So we can, by using fusion image, we can rotate the image in the workstation and see uh, 3D. So we can maneuver the picture and see which one or which part is uh, the problem. And if we make the orientation into surgical view, we can see like this picture on the left is the fusion image. Red is the vessels and the yellow is the, uh, the nerves. We can identify that the in, uh, offending vessels uh, as uh, pictured. And uh, on the right side, during surgical view, we can see that it confirms the, the vessel that uh, offended the nerve is the same with the pre-surgical uh, pre simulation. And this is for hemifacial spasm. So they join also three modalities, MR, uh, MR, MR, uh, sorry, MR angio, uh, sorry, uh, this one is MR, uh, MR famous, and uh, CT angio and DWI. This is the orientation of the surgical view. And the same problem here is the uh, offending vessel can be identified and uh, microvascular decompression was done. And this is for also trigeminal neuralgia again. And we can see that the vertebral arteries uh, pushing the fifth nerve on the left side. This is the surgical view. And uh, we can see that it confirmed with the surgical, I mean, dur during surgery, during surgery uh, the same picture with uh, pre-surgical simulation. So to keep it short as a conclusion for me, modern imaging technique like fusion image helps surgeons to have pre-surgical view not only for vascular, but also for uh, tumor surgery or uh, any surgery that needs uh, navigation for, uh, to approach the lesion. And preoperative simulation is useful, like uh, the one the uh, Professor Kano, uh, Professor Sano said that uh, before you do surgery, you finish the surgery in your imagination. I think that is uh, the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you. Dr. Hira. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So any questions on fusion imaging? Any uh, comments by the panelists? Dr. Ichita, would you like to add something to this? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh... The fusion image in our country may be difficult to perform because this from their uh, economic system or problem some problem. But in Japan, mm -hmm. I I I know it's called it's not expensive. But if we have the machine, maybe we can process like the imaging is helped at too much to perform surgery. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, do we have Dr. Abdul Rahman with us still? Uh, what are the how is it in uh, Tayumen? Ibrahim, can you highlight on that? Uh, what what? I repeat, please. The, the role of the use of uh, fusion imaging in uh, Tayumen in your setup. Ah, MRI is uh, Tesla three, three Tesla maybe. No, okay. three Tesla, three Tesla CT and O arm and. Uh, See arm, but all okay. All right, so we proceed with our um, uh, last talk for the day. Uh, 
just um, let me confirm uh, we have uh, dr ichikai uh, sakaranjai he will be talking about cerebral aneurysm management he's uh, from thailand department of neurosurgery prince, uh, prince of songkhla university songkhla dr ichikai yeah. thank you so much for your talk yes please <laughs> Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Iti Chai. I am the first student, uh, first fellowship from Manchene Hospital with Professor Yoko Kato when she moved to this hospital. So today I will talk about the uh, how to management of uh, cerebral aneurysm, but I just uh, refrain in the basic of the principle how to treat. As you know, the, now they uh, have the many device can assist the uh, aneurysm surgery. So today I will conclude it about how to uh, treat or how to prepare about the pre of intraoperative and postoperative treatment. Because of the most of the patient came to uh, the hospital with the diffuse subranal hemorrhage like this. But uh, as you know, the effects of aneurysm rupture uh, it depends on the one loop of subrationoid and uh, clinical grading. This uh, condition will cause up uh, icky intracranial pressure, hydrocephalus, or seizure. But uh, the pathologic change, they have the effects to the systemic. Uh, because at that time, the, uh, uh, the banalism can cause about the, uh, many of of uh, many uh, like uh, hypermetabolism in every organ, especially in the heart and in the lung. Because uh, the increased ICP for magnesium breathing may be uh, decreased of cerebral core and the patient have the brain ischemia and further brain damage. So we should prevent the rebreathing after we can uh, see the patient have the subretinal hemorrhage. For the pre-operative management, as you know, the high blood pressure prevention, this is the best one to prevent the aneurysm formation. And also, we, if we are uh, uh, in stroke, 2000, uh, 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 2012, they uh, proposed about the if we can eat the vegetable, maybe we can decrease the risk of rupture aneurysm. Because of uh, aneurysm rupture, we can diagnose for three modality, for cerebral angiography, CTA, and MRA. Then we uh, definitely treatment by keeping or calling. Because the AA guideline, they recommended to uh, uh, use the CTA or MRA or DSA. But for the simplest way, we can uh, diagnose by CT non contrast. If we not see the subrenal hemorrhage, we should LP first. Then we bring the patient to uh, perform the vessel angiography. For prevention of the rebeating, we should keep the cystic pressure less than 160 millimeter curie. At the ER, if before the patient was diagnosed subrenal hemorrhage, we should URA about the vital sign. And don't forget, because as I mentioned before, this uh, aneurysm rupture can cause about the systemic effect. We should uh, examine the heart and the lung, and we perform the EKG. Uh, then we complete the neuro examination. And, and keep an IV and group mat and uh, perform the shed x-ray and admit the patient at that time. And from the CT scan, we should know the fissure grading of the patient at that time. What this is because the different gate is a, can predict about the outcome of the patient because the grade one, yeah, it can cause the vessel spasm 21% and the gate three, this is the most of vessel spasm was more than 37%. And we devised the clinical UR reaction because the grade five, the survival only 10%. For the pre-operative, I think we know, uh, we know everything before, but I want to uh, uh, 
uh, acknowledgement in some work in 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 some monitoring we should uh, record weather side every one hour and record the intake output uh, and detectors and monitor airline if we, we can perform the CVP insertion if the patient have some like a, we uh, want to uh, have the IV infusion this is in my patient the patient have the hypertension at the admission I give about the nicotine drip and insert the ALI monitoring. And be careful, you should tell the nurse at the time we avoid to, to put the foreign cat teacher or NG tube because it's a stimulant about the pain and aneurysm can cause the rupture. We apply the EMRA, this is the local uh, anesthetic in the, in the puncture side because it uh, can decrease the pain when we puncture. This is the angiographic room that I bring the patient and I uh, just uh, want to know which is the exact of the location of aneurysm uh, before I go to the treatment. This is the med medication that uh, we keep. The blood pressure is less than uh, 160 millimeter mercury as I mentioned before. And we can keep the, some medication like a stool cock suppression or anti epileptic drug. This is uh, the order at my hospital. We keep very strict about the blood pressure and we uh, they, uh, like a prescribe about the, the, uh, about the drug anti cough and uh, stool subtender because it prevents uh, the patient have a new rupture. So the nicotine we can dry drain until the maximum about for 15 milligram per hour for the control of the blood pressure. So there's a special, a special situation we should avoid about the uh, hyperthermia, hypo and hypertension, hypo and hyperglycemia, or, uh, and we, can, we should avoid about the hypovolemic state. For the, the poor care of the patient, we, we should treat or not, at the time, because if we delay for treatment about the poor care of the patient, maybe the death rate is a rate to 70%. If we aggressive treatment, the death rate decrease to 50%. This is the most important point why we should treat uh, the poor care. before we should before and the was right treatment because at that time the hemo said uh, hemo that is not good for perform clipping of the high gain because if we 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 see the patient have the high high grade we should try or keeping uh, as soon as possible so uh clipping or hoying in my hospital we prefer the uh my microsurgical creeping in the uh, uh, circulation and the good uh, uh, clinical at that time, at the first time, um, and not too old, we perform the creeping. And, uh, and coiling for posterior circulation, I prefer to treat with endovascular coiling or the patient very old at, uh, at the time we perform the, uh, we, not, we should not perform the sur surgical creeping. For intraoperative management, this is uh, the uh, operative room. We should have the microscope and the goose device. Uh, and if we have the high bit operation, we can do it uh, for in this room because we can monitor if uh, some sometime we have like, had some accident during dissection. Uh, the endovascular treatment at the time can be helpful. How to avoid uh, about the surgical complication. For the wasra injury, we should uh, uh, avoid about the perforator, perforator artery injury or the premature aneurysm rupture. But uh, for non wasra uh, injury, we should avoid the focal brain contusion or the cranial nerve injury during surgery because the wasra injury 
during surgery, uh, the most incident have occurred during dissection or the clipping techniques. For the Sinvian dissection, we should uh, use a, spec a spectra, but we, we, we should uh, perform only my retection because uh, if we perform the heavy retection, maybe the cause of the brain contusion like this. And we uh, have to open the arachnoid membrane as carefully. Uh, uh, the finally, we can see about the aneurysm or the parent artery. That's close to uh, the aneurysm next. And the finally, uh, if we enough to uh, dissection the symbion, we can uh, easy to clipping of aneurysm like this. For the combination, as I mentioned before, because this, we compromise about the parent artery, maybe the patient have some symptom of stroke or temporal embolism. Uh, we should have about the intra overchip Doppler microsurgery on all ICG because the ICG can help us to confirm the unusual morphology and uh, the complete obliteration. For endoscopic, just optional because in Japan they use in every case, but in my country, we don't have this device during the surgery. Or the MEP also can monitor about the perforator artery injury during keeping. For the microscope, the 4800 can help us because they have like a, a color map that we uh, can confirm us uh, above the clipping complete or not. If uh, it can still have the flow around the clipping area, that means we we not complete obliteration of aneurysm like this. For the new device that I have published before about the endoscopic from the start company, they can provide like a to write like this. We can uh, mobile about the endoscope during clipping and we can confirm is uh, complete or not after clipping. Or the Jiwa, uh, that means for ICG, we can see about the white and black, but for Jiwa, uh, we can see about the green one and we can confirm also about the, the near, uh, about the structure, about the aneurysm. Okay, I will move fast because the time is gone. Uh, this is uh, the special situation if we found this uh, atherosclerotic in the wall of anusim, we should uh, avoid to creep it because it can cause about the anusim. Okay, this is in my, my case. I uh, use the ICG and the creeping aneurysm at that time, like this. If we can practice in many cases, maybe it's not too difficult for us. For post-operative care, uh, we should control the blood pressure and uh, we, we should give about the uh, nimodepine uh, before, because prevent of about uh, vasospasm. This is uh, for send, sending order of my patient. We usually to perform the head elevation and on the pneumatic cup compression. And the monitoring, we should have the invasive monitoring from the arterial or for the airline, CVP, or uh, non-invasive blood pressure measuring. And the antidote CO2 can uh, help us about the uh, monitor about the band edema. This is my patient. Uh, every patient have a pneumatic cup compression during surgery because preventive vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. So the vasospasm, as you know, we cause one of uh, vasospasm is uh, nearly 80%, percent uh, 90 percent, and the onset maybe until two weeks. Uh, I also use the TCD to uh, uh, diagnose about the cerebral uh, vasospasm and the keep about the blood volume uh, intake more than two liters per day. And 
for vasodilation, it can cause the brain edema like this. Maybe we can use about the uh, in the vascular technique about the navigate the microcatheter and give about the nicotine. It can help us to decrease the severity of vasodilation like this. So uh, uh, I, I will go about the con conclusion because if uh, the patient uh, that present about the seizure, fever, or uh, myocardial uh, infarction or anemia, we choose con concern about the special condition that associate about the uh, aneurysm rupture. So we, we should uh, treat the patient as soon as possible. At the first thing, we should perform the CT uh, non contract and admit the ICU and perform the full vessel angiography as soon as possible. Then, if the patient has the poor condition, we should bring the patient to perform the calling. If the patient has the good status, we should select the patient to perform the clipping as soon as possible. So I just want to announce all of you to uh, attend my conference in next year in Phuket about the minimal invasive neurosurgery. Uh, uh, the course will be uh, organized on the next October. If you have a time, please visit in my country. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ititai. It was really good. Um, any comments? Any questions? Um, we see um, we see a, we see two new panelists. Hi, Donny. Hi, could you please introduce yourself, Donny? Let me unmute okay, him, Mahira. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Donny, can you hear us? There you go. Okay, Donny, please introduce yourself. Yes, thank you. Oh, uh, I'm Donny from Indonesia. Hello. Hi, yeah, yeah, we can Hello. hear you. Yes, please introduce yeah, yeah. yourself. Yeah, I'm Donny from Indonesia. Okay, are well, you yeah. a resident? Uh, no, I'm a neurosurgeon. Oh, okay, okay. Welcome to the panel. Welcome to the panel. Uh, thank you. And Warlex, hi Warlex, you came late in. Hi from Thailand. Hi. Hi. How are you? Uh, first of all, my two Please friends. introduce uh, yourself. <laughs> um. Hi, everyone. So my name is Anna. I'm the um, president from Indian University. Oh, hi. All right. Um, uh, welcome. Any uh, questions? Any comments uh, from the panel for this presentation uh, by uh, on cerebral aneurysm management? So I think that is it. Uh, Dr. Iticha, you have to uh, stop the screen share and we end our symposium here. Um, I would just like to take a few more minutes and uh, introduce to you about the student society which we are running. Dr. Iticha, could you please uh, stop the screen sharing? Yeah. So just give me a moment to introduce to you about the AMS RS. This is our students. Um, um, society run under the auspices of WFNS and the Asian Congress. I would like to invite you all to our upcoming uh, symposium, which is held this month on November 29th and 30th, exclusively for medical students who are in their final years and um, who would like to uh, pursue neurosurgery. Um, I'll just... Uh... Can you see my slides, John? It will also be televising that... Uh... Here, yeah, on, that will be televised live on Neurosurgical TV. So this right. is our um, program. We have faculty coming from, uh, Professor Kato will be coming. Um, we have faculty coming from Japan, Pakistan, Brazil, China, India, England, Africa. It's a uh, hands-on, we are focusing more on uh, microsurgical anastomosis and drilling techniques for young neurosurgeons and medical students as well. Um, this is our program and uh, we would like to invite you all to come over Nepal and have a look at the Center on Neurosurgery. It's, a, it's set up in a place where, uh, where the resources are less, but we have managed to uh, build up a center to
provide the best of neurosurgical care under one unit. So you're all welcome and uh, be a part of this society and we look forward to having more of such webinars. Thank you all. We are done for today. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone. Thank you, Dr. John. Bye. You can Thanks go offline now. Thank you. Okay, we Thank stopped you. recording. Everyone, you can swear yeah. now. You can swear now. Yeah. I hope it was a good. Um, it hey, was a good one. And, yeah. Well, yeah, it was that was good here at putting everything together. And Warlux, she can't. <laughs> she knows the last speaker. Yes, I know him. Then say hello to him. I don't know that if he can hear me, but I still. Yeah, he can I, hear, he's uh, there now. I think. Yeah, he can. I think he's there. Oh, okay. Yeah, he can hear. Can you please? Yeah. 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 Um, hello. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Is she bothering you? Let me know if she's bothering you. No, uh, he, he, he's a staff of another institution of Thailand, but really? I have ever had an opportunity to join his lecture before wow. in Bangkok many, many times. And um, oh. I don't know, but um, I kind of like secret admire. <laughs> 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 อ่าค่ะจานแต่ขอนแก่นค่ะจานน้องปีหนึ่งจานหนึ่งครับจานอ๋อขอบคุณครับยินดีที่รู้จักค่ะโอเคเวลคัมทูเอาเอาเอาส
human. But uh, right now we're starting, we're resident town. This is the reason why we need a lot of time. I don't know, three or four weeks more to prepare a good presentation and good work to good works, uh, good jobs to show you. But yeah. uh, we need a little more of time. Okay. Okay. Well, we just we're, we're doing it in Sudan and Jordan. We're basically we're filming what they do normally. They just do it anyways. Do you know what I mean? So it's not extra. We're just filming what they do normally. Do you do that in Thailand, uh, Warlocks? Do you have a grand round or something like that? Yes, I try to um, I try to coordinate my teachers, convince them to do, but maybe somehow they still hesitate. So maybe next time I will convince them, especially in this uh, format. Con we have the speakers from Thailand, so maybe it will be um, a great opportunity for them to have a chance. Yeah, well, I'd be glad to show them personally if they want to see it, what it's like, you know, uh, what what it's like to, yeah, there's hesitation. You know, a lot of people are kind of, sh not shy, but they don't know what it is and stuff. You know, shy. remember how shy you were? You used to wear that hood, you wore the hood so you wouldn't see your face. No, 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 but I, for the international conference and I try to like burn on my study, I cannot be shy. So like, you know, other people can see like, I am a rising star or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bring my junior residents, so they're going to join maybe sometime, next time, yeah. Oh, good, good. Uh... It's a good size. Uh, what's uh, how many residents per year in Thailand and uh, where you're at? Uh, currently, currently we have two a year. Two a year. Okay. Two. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, let's see what's coming up. Um, uh, I don't. I don't think I'm doing his his weekly Sunday normal normal thing. He's been really running back and forth. Um, we just got a neuroendoscopy conference, but it's in Spanish. I don't think you guys tell, tell, uh, okay, Leonardo, tu habla español, verdad? Hola. Hey, mira, traemos un congreso, está televisando de Uruguay. Okay, okay, Uruguay. And neuroendoscopia, okay? Bueno. Okay, el 7 de noviembre, en pocos días. Tres, cuatro días de buen charles de endoscopía. Vas a vivo en Nero Sarojia TV. Yeah, let me advertise here, Warlocks. Give me a second. I'm constantly selling things. <laughs> yes. Okay, here, here is... Uh, okay. I'm going to screen share now the... Um, Share the screen. I'll share the the, the other channel we have. Uh, is here. Okay, you see that channel, Neurosatohia TV. Okay, it's a it's ultra language. It means neurosurgery in Spanish. Tu puedes ver Leonardo, verdad? Sí, puedo verlo. Sí, tu puedes ser miembro de este canal. Uh, necesita registrar, es gratis. Uh, pongo su foto y información. Uh, y puede ver los otros congresos que hacemos en este canal. ¿Este es un canal de, de YouTube o es una página? No, no, es un sitio de web. Yo estoy, uh, yo estoy construyendo como, como Nero Cero Surgical TV, lo mismo. Ah, mismo. Bien, bien. Otra comunidad, Televisan Congresos de Latinoamérica también. Oh, suena bien. Sí, sí, Ciudad de México, Quito, Colombia, sí, muchos lugares. Está empezando. I'm just saying we're starting to televise uh, conferences from all parts of Latin America. Um, uh, the Latin American market is really good. I don't know why, Abraham. They they really like Leonardo. They a le gusta mucho videos in Latino America. Uh, yo creo que más que todo el resto del mundo. 
But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. The, the the in Latin America, they seem to have a, a real hunger for education in videos, uh, especially live videos. You know, you know what I mean, Leonardo. Uh, yes, videos vivos. The, the reason is because we are growing like not only like a country, like all region, all South America is growing. And Tim, we are angry for information, angry for education, angry for videos, angry yes. for articles, angry for uh, all kind of things. Tim, it's a good place to show our job. It's a good place to connect, to share our channel or or things or ideas. Tim, maybe. Uh, is possible. Yeah, in the neurosurgical world, I think uh, we're, we're, we're doing well like bringing the world together. Uh, yeah. And we're, we're, we are applying for CMEs, you know, so continuing medical education credits. Uh, we're mm -hmm. applying to UNAM in Mexico City, UNAM, Universidad Autónoma de México. Estamos aplicando para crédito, para recibir créditos para participando en estos congresos. I'm just saying we're applying for credit, CME credit, for attending these conferences like you just attended, Ibrahim. Uh, it's like, for example, if someone came like you or Leonardo, you would receive one credit because you participated in the, in the panel and you were actively participating in the conference. Do you know what I'm saying? So the participants, there'd, there'd be a way of, of watching it. Just like when you go to a conference, you have to sign in and stuff like that. So it'd be the same type of thing. What do you think, Warlocks? I get worried when you're quiet. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. I, I, I think... <clears throat> I think uh, we need the uh, uh, online courses uh, after which after we take certificate certificates about uh, uh, these courses uh, because uh, I can uh, show this certificate and uh, tell I, uh, I, I, I I I know I know this and uh, attended attended or Director, yes. Or uh, when I uh, go to uh, doctor, I show this and uh, and tell I know this technique. I know this management clipping or aneurysm or certificate is. Uh, well, I, I think the idea, every country has different CME. Uh, application processes and stuff like that. Uh, generally, uh, I, I'm saying from my limited experience, I'm saying that if you go to a university and become affiliated with a university and you receive the credits from the university, uh, it would mean more than receiving it from neurosurgical TV. Do, do you know what I'm saying, Ibrahim? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I... I understood a little bit, but uh, my English is a uh, little bit is bad <laughs> um, because I uh, no understood all. Okay, well, but, my, uh, my I, Russian, my Russian is not good. <coughs> <laughs> well, Doctor Bennett, I need to ask you um, if for so one month or or more we want to present uh, about the one term through this channel to this way we need to send you a preliminary paper or a preliminary video and no, after no, that no, 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 I, I, no I no I trust okay. neurosur anyone in neurosurgery to give the know how to give a presentation and know how to do PowerPoint so that's saves me a lot of time just let me know what date is good for you and what the topic is and we'll put it whenever whenever you want on uh, neurosurgical TV. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anytime you're free, just let me know that, what time is the best and give me a couple of days. Cause it helps for me to advertise 
you know, it's become more, you see, really, the people I'm trying to reach are the residents, the students, and neurosurgeons. The, the general public, I'm not too interested in reaching, but uh, I'm learning. Like, Abraham is a blogger, and he's been around a long time. I'm sure he knows uh, to get viewers, you have to have, like, you promote, you advertise, you let them know you're there so you can give your message. So anyways, yeah, it would be, that's why I need a couple of days before you want to give a presentation so I can advertise online to get you, get some people to come watch you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that Dr. Applies, Bennett, uh, yeah. Dr. Bennett, uh, sorry. Uh, did you understand uh, about, I tell you, uh, if you, if you, uh, if you giving after lectures the dig digital certificate uh, to email of all, uh, that's uh, that be nice. That would be nice uh, if you, you mean questions. If, questions, if, you mean? If you if you giving if you giving digital certificate after lecture these lectures. Oh, after the lecture, okay. Yes, the, this oh, would be would be nice. Uh, to have to have a time to ask questions, you mean? Uh, maybe, uh, for example, a uh, course a course uh, about uh, clipping aneurysm. Yes, for example. Right. right. Treating aneurysm. Right. One, two, three. One, two, three, four lectures, and every day, every day. Right. After this course, uh, you giving you give digital certificate. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. A digital certificate that you attended yes. the conference. For, yes, for members uh, which uh, he, 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 he this these lectures. Yeah, this. well, uh, well I, 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 I have given them before to neurosurgeons that say, uh, can you just say I attended uh, uh, the lecture and then give the address of the of the uh, presentation that I, I give that from from my yeah from neurosurgical TV I then, can give them then then people then people will join uh, more people will join uh, this uh, okay well maybe uh, yeah maybe that's an idea I haven't thought about that to like members of the website that okay, attend thanks. attend will get a certificate that's that's a good idea yeah, I think, I think I'll tell the members that. Okay, now that you're qualified to get a certificate of attendance. Uh, but you know, Abraham, um, it's just like a, when you go to a conference, Warlicks, uh, you got to sign in that you, you know, attended. You know how that goes, right? It's going to, you know, we're going to have to do the same thing, I think, with this technology, Abraham. It'll be limited to people that are on the panel. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Because how do we know that someone watched it <laughs> online? Do, do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that initially, for, in order for this to mean anything, it's going to, for people that were on the panel, can get that certificate. You think that would be okay, Ibrahim? Okay. Yeah, that would be a starting point. Because I think just for, to, have, to give a certificate, you don't know if they attended or not. It's impossible. <laughs> So uh, anyways, yeah, we're, we'll be applying to different countries. Um, and you have to have CMEs in Thailand, right, uh, Warlicks? You, do you have CMEs in Thailand? Yeah, I guess they're not listening. War, Warlicks, do you, do you have CMEs? You have continuing medical education credits there? And I think we do. They talked about it. Uh, Right when we finished um, medical school, but the, I I don't think anyone is anyone pays a, that much attention. To oh, it. okay, okay. Well, every place is different. Every place is different. We'll, we'll find out how it works. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, uh, uh, we were thinking about doing that just to give it a little bit more validation and more uh, more use, essentially, to get to, because. Because some countries you have to have so many credits per year to keep up with your 
license or your specialty. Some some places are like that. So we, we might try that. But um, anyways, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is exciting, Abraham. And Morlocks, we're growing, and in, in, uh, we got the Jordan, we got the Saudi, we got the Middle East. We're making inroads there with the weekly Jordan Grand Rounds. Uh, and it's done very humbly by the doctor there from Jordan. They just use a laptop. They didn't even, you know what they use, Ibrahim and Jordan? A laptop and a webcam. They don't have a big camera or anything else. Uh, to, to, to film him giving a lecture, the, the Ibrahim Sabaya. Sabaya. Um, and he gives a multidisciplinary presentation, uh, Warlock. So I, I don't know, you know, they, they, he gives a presentation from the neurosurgical point of view, and then he has a cardiologist, an anesthesiologist sometimes, an uh, internist sometimes, because just like you consult uh, on a patient. If, if the problem impacts another specialty, they have that physician come up and and you know tell his part of the of the case. But it's it's, it's interesting. But he just does that. And once again, here I am. I'm going to do another PowerPoint screen share. Hold on, hold on, guys. <laughs> it's my turn to lecture. Okay, I'm gonna give. Yeah. What, what relax, what relax. Uh, I have a question to you. Okay. Uh, I uh, very interesting for me about uh, World Association of Young Neurosurgeons. Have okay. we have we this or not? World 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 Association of Young Neurosurgeons. Yeah. Yes. So, pardon. What is your questions again, sir? Uh, are you, are do, you part of do the... we have do we have do we have association oh. of young neurosurgeon world world association of young neurosurgeon? I think I think we do because I I used to see lots of um, these kind of associations, but I don't. But I did not in the um, that group you know, close. So I don't know how that work. But um, I used to be um, connected by one of the new surgeons from Singapore. And she said that she wants to make the kind of like Southeast Asian on Asian um, young little surgery residents to become the like to be together. But it's still not work. Yeah, but um, I, I think that uh, if like you are in Russia and if you want to promote that to make it come true, so I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good. That's what you, you want to do, right, Abraham? You want to do that? You want to? Yes, uh, you want. Uh, we want. We want to join uh, this association, Russian Association of Young Neurosurgeons. Want yeah, to yeah. join okay. this world? Uh, a session of well, you know, he talked to Hera. Have you talked to Hera? She's the head of an Asian uh, association of students. Hera, Hera talk to is, Hera. Uh, Hera is president president of uh, Asian uh, Association of Right, right, right. Okay, so you've, you've talked to her about about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's. She's the head yeah. of that, so you can talk. You got her. You got her contact information, uh, Abraham. Yes, yes, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay yeah, and I'm sure the Walter Dandy, uh, have you, are you familiar with that organization? They have organizations in various countries. Uh, as far as the young neurosurgeons of the world, I guess maybe just Google it. I know there are different countries have neurosurgical students interested in neurosurgery. So... <coughs> Have you met Slavin from Croatia? Uh -huh. I don't think you met Slavin, but he's pretty active. Uh, and there's a girl from Romania that is active with her local organization. Uh, I'll try to give you her. Are you trying to get all these organizations together or are you just thinking Asia? 
to, together together it would be nice if you sit together okay maybe create maybe create in the group or chat uh, with the presidents of uh, another another uh, associations okay i think there may be an association now for most of the world and different countries have, seem to have them some don't but uh, well, i've seen one in romania croatia uh and other other countries because we certainly want to attract those students there's one in mexico uh, that's a neural more or less neuro, students that are interested in neurosurgery and neurology they form a group they have one in latin america uh i'll try to get the contact info for you for that one it's a pretty big organization that's the organization i'm trying to collaborate with getting continuing medical education uh, because for example, for example we will do uh, olympiad of neurosurgery for uh, medical students uh, in April, in April next year. Okay. And, uh, and we, and we uh, want to invite uh, of all the medical students in, uh, from, from other countries. Yeah, that would, be, that would be a good conference. We could do a webinar. Uh, Yes. That, that's a good idea. You know, uh, uh, this is how things get done. Uh, uh, Warlicks and Leonardo, you get an idea, like Abraham mm -hmm. says, let's have a conference for young, uh, for medical students interested in neurosurgery. We could do and, that. Uh, our, we could, we and, could our, do that. Our, and our Olympiad of neurosurgery will be international. Inter oh, will okay. Be international. Well, you know, work, Abraham, work on that idea. You, you know, just put... If, you can put some speakers together. Uh, hell, we can do it. We could do it. We could say this is for medical students that are interested in neurosurgery. On on December fifteenth, we're going to have you know speakers. Uh, okay. So think of some speakers to get, and we could do it. Boom, boom. Uh, I usually I like to have a month a month time to get ready for it. So. Uh, the first, this is how we do it. I did it in Latin America with great conferences. The, the, for, here's the first steps we need to do. First, we need, we need to get some speakers. Uh, I'll make a sheet, a sheet of like time slots. And then you just need to get speakers at different, the different times. Uh, that's how you start it off. Uh, once you get the speakers, then you can start advertising it. Um, and, and probably and another step is to get a date, but we'll, you know, we'll communicate by text. Uh, okay. The first step is to get a date that's good for you. Okay. okay. And then we'll work on getting speakers. We could always cancel if we don't, we're successful, but I think we will be. I think if we have at least a month ahead of time, pick a date and then boom, we'll start, you and I will start working on getting speakers. Not, not a lot of work, but just a little work. I think we can do it. What okay. do you think, Lorelux? Are you excited? Yeah! Yay, excited. there we go. <laughs> there we go. And we'll, and we'll have, you, know, you must know some students in uh, Thailand that are interested in neurosurgery, correct? Yes. Yeah, right? that, yeah, there's <laughs> some, yeah, there's probably some students and that's what Abraham's talking about have a conference tailored yeah, to yeah, students yeah. that <laughs> want to go into neurosurgery and make it worldwide. Or Alex, uh, do you have, do you have WhatsApp or Telegram? No. Nope. Telegram. Telegram. Telegram or WhatsApp, WhatsApp uh, uh, for connect. Oh, you can, uh, I have Facebook. Ah, Facebook. Um, okay. I, I will find Facebook. Uh, what to, what name? What what Alex? What Alex in in Facebook? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let, let me get. Um, ah, Dr. Yes, if possible, share your contact. Uh, oh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> oh. 
Kung sa inyo ewa. I will I will send you by message. Okay. Okay. Uh, let, let me uh, show you guys that that simple method that they 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 broadcast from Jordan and what they use. It's very basic. All he uses is a laptop. Okay. You can no. see the laptop, right? Yes. And this is this is him. This is him in the front of the auditorium. Someone else is taking a picture here, but he's presenting from the podium. And on the podium, he has that camera where we we, we film him. And, and it, it, it gives us a really, really good looking, uh, good looking presentation. And we don't have to have a technician involved, you know, because one, one of the things about these conferences is that you have to have uh, a technician involved. But anyways. Anyways, and guys, this program, this program is supported by Linux in Linux platform at the same Ubuntu. Yes. Yes, it's possible to use it. Yes, it's free. Okay. It's free. Okay. Yeah. Go, go, uh, um, you mean Zoom? Zoom is free to use. You can, yeah, you can use it for conversations with anybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, yeah, it's but to have run a conference, you gotta you you got I, I have a paid account, so uh, I know to put it on the internet and and things like that. But uh, for a, a, a very uh, expensive uh, because uh, fourteen dollars uh, of months uh, maybe yes. For uh, yeah, for a paying account, I don't know. Uh, without without uh, pay uh, uh, this uh, no it's can, free it's free but if you, you want if you want to use Facebook with it or or have other types of uh, of uh, associations dreams you got to pay in other words like right now uh, we, we brought we, we 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 recorded it in zoom it's recorded. Uh, we also had streamed it on Facebook, but the stream wasn't really edited. You know, we had the intro before we started talking, and then I erase that basically after we're done and keep the Zoom uh, mm -hmm. presentation, which is tighter. It starts when the presentation starts. It ends when the hearer says good night, and that, that was it. So. This is better, better uh, program uh, app uh, for better pl platform for uh, conference online conference. It's yeah, Zoom. yeah. The content is is or the quality of the video is better with Zoom. Uh, for once you stop that stream, yes. as opposed to the Facebook stream is. The we check, uh, we check it, we check it other platform, but uh, this platform is best for online conference. Yeah, I like it so far. We used Google Hangout for a long time. I don't think you've ever used that, Warlix. Uh, uh, do you have experience with Google Hangout at all? Do you guys have any experience with Google Hangout? No, no. But uh, we use that a lot, um, Abraham. But uh, Google wasn't improving it at all. It was just staying the same. Zoom is really this is their business. They're gonna, they're going to improve it, uh, and I think it's got. They have a great future. Uh, because the video uh, revolution, I mean, really, it's going to go to all areas, not just medicine. People are going to get, get better at making videos. <laughs> and I'm betting that they want to have places to put those videos, like neurosurgical TV. Hopefully, we'll have uh, places like Seattle, who produces a show every week. You've seen it, I think, Warlicks, right? And I don't know if Leonardo, you've seen it. They have live neurosurgical presentations from Seattle. I'm able to take that and put it on neurosurgical TV as a convenient place for people to find neurosurgical stuff. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? To have one channel, uh, and hopefully that channel, you'll be able to tune in to Russian Grand Rounds one day, Thailand the next, or, or whatever. Now, just think of that, Warlex. You'll be doing a weekly show from Thailand. Yes. <laughs> Maybe there you go. I'm from Thailand. <laughs> well, you could be the you could be the the uh, moderator, of course. 
One day, of course, one day. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, one day. There's no hurry. And Abraham's going to do the same, Ho hopefully. Uh, and because I I'm not trying to give you guys work, just basically roles, uh, you know, for things you normally do anyways. Conferences. You go to conferences. So uh, I think the, the face of conferences is going to change. It's going to be more virtual than going in person. But at any rate, okay. Any, uh, any what, what are your thoughts, uh, Warlocks? What? Hey, I don't know what's going on with China, man. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I, I I'm try I have to get a visa. You know, we have to have a visa to go to China, right? You, you guys have to have a visa to go to China? No. I don't, I don't know. I think I know in America you do. It depends on the nationalities, but I thought that for Americans more freely to go to China. You, but uh, you have to do the you visa. Still, you have to get a visa. You have to get a visa. Really? You have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get a letter of invitation. That American cannot access. I mean, like my <laughs> boyfriend, like he don't have to do the visas to go to Japan, to go to other countries. So I'm really jealous. But I don't know about China. I know. North Korea, North Korea, Cuba. And, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, we can't go. We can't go there. I wasn't contemplating a weekend in North Korea, but... The um, uh, China, the, the, they don't say it, but when you, there's some countries you have to get a visa and China is one of them. So uh, I don't know why, I don't know, but you got to do it. So I haven't to... heard, I haven't heard from uh, Yuha. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they changed their mind, uh -huh. uh, but I'm going to Spain. They've invited me to go to Spain. I will, I, I've been dying to go to Spain for a long time. I've been when will you go? When you will go to Spain? Uh, January twelfth. There's a conference there that we've been televising for the fourth year in a row on neurointerventional radiology. Oh my god! Yeah, there's a lot of neurosurgeons that are going to be. We're going to televise it. You're going to see it. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to be there interviewing people. So that that'll be good, Abraham, to get the see be on site to see them set up the camera and set up the sound. And, and everything else, and I'll be doing interviews with. Th they'll be so tired of being interviewed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, they have a really good conference. They get some great names in neurointerventional radiology from all over the world. They get a Chicago neurosurgeon, Demetrio Lopez, who's very big in stroke. He's a neurosurgeon. You know, there are some neurosurgeons working. In yeah. interventional radiology. Yeah, yeah, it's a field that I interested, and I. Oh, you're to... interested? Oh my yes. God! Oh, you're gonna love this. You know who's going? You who's going? I didn't know. I didn't know about that because at that time I will be in Bangkok, and I have already um, pay for the um some conference in Bangkok that will held on the February. That doctor. Uh, some some guy from the famous guy from neuro neurovascular surgery from Japan. He will demonstrate the live surgery case there at okay. Tamasa that we have on the February. Oh, but I did not know about the events this January. Yeah, let, I'm gonna try to find uh, find it for you. Hold on. Uh, let me let me just just give me a second. Go through my email. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'm on the case. Okay. Once again, I'm going to screen share. Yeah, we've televised this. This will be our fourth year, uh, uh, Abraham. And now they invited me. They're paying for my ticket and everything. Can you see this? Yes. 
Okay, this is a conference in Spain. We're going to televise 11th and 12th. I'm going to be there. Uh, and they have some really good faculty. But let me get the, uh, let's see here, register. Program, okay. Okay, here's the names. I don't know if France. Okay, look at it. They have one one encouraging sign I'm seeing, Abraham, is speakers from China are going from Yuha's hospital. There's <coughs> Yuha's uh, Dr. Tian Yao, <coughs> and there's a couple of others, but they'll be there too. Yuha is speaking. Uh, Bulang Gu. Oh, he's, he's also from China. Here's Yuha. Yuha is doing, giving a couple of talks on clipping aneurysms. As you know, he's a big, uh, so they got some big names here. Okay, Japan, Muchimoto. Okay, Lopez. I'm trying to look at Richard Hamel. He's very big. They don't have Lopez coming this year. Maybe I should ask Lewis if he wants to bring him in. See, last year we brought him in virtually, uh, Warlicks. We, we, we brought other people from other parts of the world to the conference, from Chicago, et cetera, virtually. So now that's one population. They're spread out all over the place, and, and there's not a concentration of them. You know, they're sprinkled, you know, throughout the world. So you're seriously considering a specialty in that? Yeah. Wow. You're going to love this conference. It's really <laughs> good. And yeah. you'll be able to, we're going to do it on Zoom, so you'll be able to be on the yeah. panel. And I hopefully do. we'll be able to integrate this technology more. Now that I'm going to be there, uh, yeah. it might uh, somehow get the audience involved in the conference more. Do you know what I'm saying, Ibrahim? Yeah. Education is changing. It's going to be a morph of person and virtual. But um, we'll see how we can somehow get the audience more involved in the conference, which is what they want to do. They want to reach a wider audience. Uh, they can't, not just the 50 people at the conference. They want to reach thousands of people, hopefully, that are spread out. They can't make it to Madrid, Spain. So. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bennett, because uh, what you do is very important. Well, you know, I, I, Abraham, I love, I'm like you was probably in the operating room. I just love it. You know, uh, I love it, you know, uh, and, and it's not, it does not a matter of time or work. It's, I love it. I'd be doing this, you know, I, Hey, I love it. And I hope to get other, uh, well, we'll eventually get neurosurgeons involved that are kind of retiring and they still want to teach. Yeah. Young guys like you, you know, mm -hmm. they want to still get involved. We'll, we'll, they'll be, they'll become involved eventually. Okay. But uh, uh, you yourself, you're going to meet some of the top neurosurgeons mm -hmm. in, in the world on, on this platform. <laughs> so yeah, you, in your future, it won't hurt to meet all these guys. Yeah. You've already got a great start. Uh, we've got like we got to get Burdenko involved. You've heard of Burdenko, right, uh, Warlocks? I don't know. Who's that? Have you heard of Burdenko Institute in Moscow? Oh, yeah. Burdenko. Burdenko. Burdenko is institute institute in Moscow. It's main 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 institute of neurosurgery. It's a, it's really it's the best, right, in Russia? Uh, is it considered I, I the invite, best? I invite you uh, to Russia, to Moscow, to Taiwan. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, my um, brother, my brother went to Russia. <laughs> my brother, my brother tried to work in Moscow. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, he he was uh, in real estate. He was in another career, not in medicine. But, but, uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. 
Sorry, I gotta go to OR. <laughs> okay, well, what's the case? It's the um, uh, 13 years old pregnant woman. She had a terrible accident. Oh, 13? 13. 13, yes. Oh my God. Yeah, okay, oh my God. well, good luck. You're doing great work. Great, I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much. And okay, so it's always good to see you, Warlocks, and your associate. What's your first name again? Intat. Okay, nice Intat. to meet you, John Bennett. And uh, the, uh, <laughs> nice to meet you. This, this is Abraham. Okay, we'll see you guys. Have a great day. Bye, Abraham. Bye. 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 Thanks, Abraham. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.